Did you ever think you would make it? I feel I'm so close, I could take sweet victory. I know this life meant for me. Yeah, why would you bet on Goliath when we got bet David? Value came in, giving values contagious. This world of entrepreneurs, we get no value to hate. And how they run, homie, look what I become. I'm the, I'm the one. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, you know, we'll we'll address that. By the way, uh, uh, we have a uh, special guest here with us, um, Governor DeSantis' campaign manager, is here with <laughs> us to, to, to spend some time and break down what happened. And we're, we want to get all the commentary. But aside from that, we That's have a time on his hands. <laughs> <now. laughs> yeah. Just doing what I think is right. <laughs> no, we have the great Dave Rubin in the house. We're excited. We, when we when we have Dave here, it's home team. We just kind of go Love through it. the stories, and we got a lot of stories to go through. Uh, we got uh, 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 Candace Owens and Rabbi Shmuley, okay, we have to talk about because that was going viral all over the place. And Dave and Adam will probably be commenting on it. Jared Kushner praises very valuable potential of Gaza's waterfront, waterfront property. And then aside from that, Miami Beach business owners thank DeSantis for best spring break ever because I think they had like 250 arrests. And DeSantis, there's a video of him saying he's thinking about flying Haitian immigrants migrants to Martha's Vineyard is on the table. He's thinking about doing that, which uh, <laughs> you know, the, the way he trolls when he goes into this mode, he is so good at this part of the game. Well, if they like Miami, they'll love Martha's Vineyard. That's right. I, I, I think that's a good point. Anyway, Stephen A. Smith, uh, warning to Dems, fear mongering Trump won't work. Kevin O'Leary says New York Attorney General Letitia James threat to seize Trump's assets is an attack on America. By the way, craziest picture I found, CNN, while they're telling the story about the fact that Mar-a-Lago, $18 million, that whole you know, uh, story about the property is only worth $18 million, when they're showing the fire sale, they show Mar-a-Lago $240 million that he could get for it. It's <laughs> oh, the hypocrisy oh, that God. now they're going through it. By the way, Trump only has till Monday to come up with the money, just so you know that. There's a lot of uh, weird things going on behind closed doors. We'll talk about that. There's three new billionaires that came out publicly Supporting Trump will tell you who those three billionaires are. FBI figures show crime fell as Americans stocked up on guns in 2023. Then Fed, Jerome Powell came out yesterday. Every part of the market right now is pretty much at at an all-time high. He came out and he says Fed holds rates steady and maintains three cuts coming sometime this year. So he's saying we're not raising, we're not lowering it today. But we will sometime throughout the year. Bill Gates, Terra Power plans to build first U.S. next generation nuclear plant. Google's woke AI wasn't a mistake. We know we were there. A couple former employees talk about how this has been going on for a while. Alaska Airlines windshield cracks while landing in latest in-flight incident for Boeing. FAA chief calls out issues around safety culture at Boeing. Credit scores fall for the first time in a decade as Americans struggle to save, keep up with payments. Americans increasingly upside down on auto loans. Cuba on a verge of collapse as country hits by blackouts and run out of food. Dan Schneider, Nickelodeon. Oh, great. Vinny watched the whole documentary twice, I think. Yeah, breaks good. down. Dan Schneider breaks down the si- his silence following explosive documentary. But uh, uh, there's three clips of Ariana Grande that you have to see. I don't know how old she's in those clips, by the and way. 14, 15 Yeah, and parents pops. just brace for impact. It's not that bad, but you have to see that Dan Schneider, who's behind all of this, is encouraging kids to do just some ridiculous stuff that took place. Bad. And maybe some of the questions is also towards the parents. And aside from that, Don Lemon, just 10 minutes ago, based on what Dave Rubin just told me, maybe we'll start off with that, said that there was some offensive... Uh, uh, you know, maybe the fact that Don is gay. Anyways, we'll play the clip to see what uh, uh, Don said that Elon Musk disrespected him. Got a few clips I want to show you. One is from AOC. We'll go through. She loses her mind. One is from Byron Donalds. He doesn't lose his mind. He just gives some data. You got to see these clips. We'll go through them. Got a couple of the clips from Trump telling Sebastian Gorka that Jewish people who vote Democrat hate their religion. And then he reacts to it. And then I got, maybe if we have time, we'll go through a couple different clips. At this point, the podcast is going to be around seven, eight hours <laughs> for us to cover all these stories. But let me start off with one thing. On the last podcast, some of you were upset in, you know, when, when uh, Tom and I, you know, were talking and, you know, uh, in the, the exchange that we had, I can't believe you said this. You got to do this. Tom should start his own show. 
So you know what's so funny when you guys said that? Yeah, Tom should have his own show. Tom's had his own show for two years. Where is the support? <laughs> Tom has so his own show? So here's what I want you to do. For those of you that claim you love Tom so much, I have a goal today. I would like to see if by the end of the podcast, we can get Tom's show, YouTube channel, 5,000 new subscribers. So if you're that committed to it, Rob, can you put the link to Tom Ellsworth, the great biz doc, YouTube channel link below in the chat. Right, right now, now? he's at 29,400. I want to see if by the end of the show, if you're that committed, if we can get him to 34,000 subs by the end of the podcast, Rob, put the link in chat, put it in description, put it in comments, put it everywhere. Go show your support and subscribe to his channel and turn on the notifications. Having said that, let's get right into the show. Pat, All right. You, you do know Thank the you. way the internet works. He's going to end up with 25,000. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> if he, I, want, I want them to prove their support and go watch his content because Tom's got some of the best business content on YouTube, and maybe we need to get more people watching it, because if we do, the economy would be doing better uh, uh, for middle Americans. Thank Anyways, let's, let's, let's get right into much. it. Of course, let's get right into it. All right, so a couple things here. Uh, Dave, uh, we, we haven't had you on since the announcement when, you know, Governor Ron DeSantis stepped out. I think it was right after, what was it? Was it first one or the second one when he said he's uh, stepping away? I don't know if it was Iowa. It was he, one of he them. He went through Iowa and then stepped out before South Carolina. Right. Yeah. Unlike Nikki Haley, yeah. who stayed till the very end, which is like, listen, man, nobody's supporting you. He did the right thing. He stepped out and he did what he did. Yeah. So uh, where are you now? I'm sure you've talked about a lot on your show, but where are you now with, you know, where uh, Governor DeSantis was? And then obviously today, with Trump, you know, Biden being sure. the nominees? Well, first off, I, you know, look, DeSantis, I have no regrets supporting him as loudly as I did. I know it had a certain cost for me in MAGA world and all that stuff. That's just politics and that's just media and all that stuff. I have to say, since the day he stepped out, I am thrilled that he is back here in Florida. And I know we're going to cover some of this immigration stuff and what's going on with the Haitians coming here and everything else. And having a governor that is as functional as he is in a state that's as functional as Florida is, is great. I am very bullish on the state of Florida, and I'm quite frankly, and I would say depressingly so, not that bullish on what's going on in America because the Democrats and Biden and whoever's really running him have just wrecked so much, and particularly what's going on with the borders. So I think DeSantis absolutely would have been the most functional mature, ready to roll person that could have crossed over more voters and everything else. However, the Trump story, I think you said this to me in my studio, if I'm not mistaken, the Trump story just was not over yet. And once they really went in on the trials and once they went in on all of the ways that they could get him, they were just pushing him. Now, the, the conspiracy version of that would be that they're doing it so that he can become the nominee, knowing he's the easiest to beat because he can't necessarily get new voters. They beat him last time, et cetera, et cetera. But 100 percent, I'm voting for Trump. And I think you're completely out of your mind if you vote for Democrats at this point. I mean, they've been exposed at every possible level. That doesn't even sound partisan to me. You got to name me a policy that the Democrats have that is not crazy. So just to end the to end the DeSantis point, it's like he's here in Florida. We got three more years of this guy in a very dangerous place that America's in. But this state is doing everything absolutely everything right. That's why I supported him. Yeah. And that's why I'm thrilled he's here. So I, I have no regrets. Yeah. My Mar-a-Lago invites have uh, disappeared. But first of all, I was that, re- re- right. It's I only re- worth 18 mil anyway. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, your, your, well, house, your house is worth more than that. I'll go have lunch with you. Are you, you know? saying that Trump is vindictive and he, because you pledge support to DeSantis, that, that, that you, all your invitations to Mar-a-Lago have been lost in the mail? Is that I don't what you're know saying? if they've been lost in the mail. I just, I don't think they're magically re- But look, I, I was friends with Junior way before his dad was in politics. We are good to go. I've become friendly with Ivanka and Jared. We are good to go. And I have no doubt mm-hmm. that Trump, that, you know, it's like, you know how it is. One little odd thing about Trump related to DeSantis is he's still going after him, which seems odd. You know, he's still de sanctimonious just a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude, just get over that stuff. Like, I know we can't change Trump and you can't tell the guy who did the thing that nobody said could be done how to behave. But like, give, you know, like shave off 5% 
percent, man. And you could you could widen this thing a little bit, but you know, there's, getting there's, him to listen. But good for you for for the position you took. You're a professional. You went to it. Here's where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. Or there's no way I'm supporting it. You know, it's not like you're gonna go do a Lincoln Project thing and no. oh, I want to do this. I'm gonna do that. And I can't stand the fact that he's doing this. You're being professional about it. You chose a team. Didn't work out. It is what it is. And to give praise to DeSantis. Uh, 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 when I talk to people who are not from Florida, so how's it feel living in Florida? So listen, when you got a guy at the top that his number one priority is taking care of his people who are job creators, who have families, who feel safe, the economy's doing well, you don't have to worry about what's going on here. He's the guy at the top making decisions. You're so good being in a state like this, and he's done a phenomenal job. Some give him an eight or a nine. I don't know if you can give a higher score for what the guy has done. He's done a phenomenal job look, as a governor. Look, look what's happened just in the last couple of days. You know, we had elections here and in Delray Beach, not too far from here, yeah. which is a Democrat stronghold that Biden won by 27 points. They now got a Republican mayor. So the Democrat Party has been obliterated, and he deserves a lot of credit for that. And especially with the border stuff, where it's like clearly the feds, it's not that they're not stopping people. They're actually encouraging people to come across. Like, if it gets worse, and I suspect it will get worse as we get closer to the election, DeSantis is going to do everything possible to make sure boats from Haiti aren't showing up. And if people are coming in through Georgia, they're going to get kicked out. He's hiring more people. Like, we, we're going to do everything right. And you can't say that. You can't even say that Let's in the other red that. states. Let's yeah. go through that since you said it. DeSantis, flying Haitian migrants to Martha's Vineyard is on the table. Rob, Beautiful. I think you have this video, Rob. If you can, uh, uh, do you have the video of him saying it? Yeah, if you can play this clip, go on and play it. I'd be willing to help do that. I think that the states really have no other choice to do that at that point. It's a little bit different for a maritime state like us. That's why we've got, we really have to get them before they, they reach the shores. And that's why we're working so hard to do that. Yeah, Although I, I will say this, we do have our transport program also that's going to be operational. So uh, Haitians land in the Florida Keys, their next stop very well maybe Martha's Vineyard. I love That's that. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I love that. I love it. Your thoughts on that, Dave? Well, it's beautiful. This is this is why we all supported the guy. It's largely why all of us moved to the free state of Florida in the first place. It had a lot to do with COVID, but it was also like, oh, there's going to be law and order here. We're going to take care of things properly. And sorry, you can't just show up. You can't just show up on our borders, whether it's by air, land, or sea, and expect to whatever they expect, whether it's to be given things or to uh, have gang violence or, or whatever, you've got to go. And again, that's why I'm telling you, the, d the day he stepped out, my reaction for as much as I supported the guy and everything else, my reaction was a bizarre sense of relief because, well, I'd love to know all of your thoughts on this. Like, I think America is seriously messed up right now. I think it's way more messed up than most of us realize, but not all of the states are, particularly Florida. And it's like, if we got three years now, to strengthen everything here, our border, our policing, do more with infrastructure, uh, the building of the roads that he's doing. You know, like he's moved, I think he told me he had seven, seven 20 year infrastructure projects that they've moved up to be seven year projects. Like we're doing it right. We're bringing in new capital. We're bringing all these people here. They're voting the right way. Just look at the results from two days ago. So it's just fine. And let Trump do everything he can to, to fight the real monster, you know? And for the Democrats, and you, you will hear liberals talk about the necessary need for the bluing of Texas and the bluing of Florida. You've heard that phrase. Oh, yeah. And how does that happen? Well, hey, we all need to move there. Californians move to Texas. They cheer it. They fail to understand which Californians are moving. It's moderates that are not going to be voting dark blue. And now you have, you know, this, this defeat of the bluing of America. Okay, you want the bluing of America? You want to do it this way? Then tell you what, here's some folks from Martha's Vineyard. You tell me if this is what you want in these United States, because last time I checked Martha's Vineyard, you're still part of these United States, so here you go. And so you, you're also hearing the complaints out of Philadelphia, the complaints out of New York, complaints out of Chicago saying, hang on, hang on, hang on. We thought you were going to throw all these people to Texas and Florida. We're not digging this. And you're hearing mayors and the citizens of those other cities getting upset by it. And we now in Florida have got some really good leadership down here. Suarez in Miami, great Republican mayor that's down here. And we've done the right thing. And I think the hurricane response by DeSantis, I've always felt, was a case study in emergency re response for his own citizens and building that bridge to get the water and, and relief supplies. I there. want to ask another question for both of you guys. Okay. And, and Adam, specifically mm -hmm. you as well. Maybe I'll come to you on this one first. 
So this whole concept with what he did with uh, the partying, right? So where Miami Beach business owners thanks DeSantis for the best spring break ever. You know, Miami Beach restaurant owner uh, George's Volgiatis complimented Governor DeSantis uh, and the, the legislature and the city's local government. For the best spring break he ever experienced, he expressed his support for their efforts to combat spring break crime and indecency. During the press conference the governor held in South Florida, it was the first year that restaurants, hotels didn't have to close down. It was the first year we didn't have to hire private security. We had such nice clients. We had good tourists. Residents stayed here. We had many of our businesses make more money. Then last year, we had no damages. The years before, people just ran into businesses, taking alcohol, breaking tables, walking out without paying the bills. And this year was the best spring break ever. I think they had 250 arrests. Do you think, as a guy who's a person who probably in your 20s, 30s, and, and, and 40s, and <laughs> I don't know, at this point, I can only go 40s. Yesterday. Yeah, 40. you partied all over Miami. Do you think a part of Miami's identity to be the place to go to spring break. You think this was a good move or a bad move? Well, I'd like to say, just say on the public uh, record uh, that if you're 20s in your 20s and you're doing spring break, you know, you're, uh, you're entitled to that. If you're 40s and you're still doing spring break, you're just an old man in the club. So I, I understand how that goes. But this has been you, an ongoing... You would know. Tom, I saw you in the club doing that dance move. Let's see if we can roll the tape on that. Uh, you have to understand that this has been an ongoing conversation in Miami and Florida man. Dave, you know, you left California and much like many of you, but welcome to Miami. But this has been an ongoing conversation since when? Since the year 2000. Why? Because Flor- Fort Lauderdale, even Florida, uh, Pensacola, everything that's going up there in the panhandle, that was always a spring break destination. Miami was never the spring break destination. Uh, it was always the New Year's destination. New Yorkers would invade, invaders, invade Miami on New Year's. And I would always grapple with the question. I'm like, you guys are coming down here, spending all this money. I'm like, they were doing this like New York double dutch. They'd come down here, uh, praise Miami, praise Florida, love it. And then they go back to New York. And I would always wonder, like, what are these guys waiting on? I would wonder that for years and years and years. But here's what happened. In 2000, PBD, you'll probably remember this. There used to be a spring break type party in Atlanta called Freaknik. Freaknik. Yeah. Told you PBD knew it. So Freaknik was... Great bookstores there. It's a very, Exactly. It's a, PBD. Freak. If you want to know anything about PBD, what he was doing in the 1990s, Freak, 2000s... Any freaky? Freaknik. They're Atlanta's most ba- infamous. I mean, it's phenomenal. So what happened was <laughs> Atlanta, Georgia, canceled Freaknik. Uh-oh. Now, you don't need to Google Freaknik yeah. to have an idea of what's going down at Freaknik. A lot of Nicks? So a lot of Nicks. Uh, a lot of Freak... <laughs> And what happened was they said, all right, where's the next best place to get our freak on? They said, let's just take 95 South with the Quad City DJs. Yeah, I let's knew head- you could have been a historian. Exactly. You know the go. history of this whole thing. Tell and, us. and let's head to Miami. Yeah. And all of a sudden, spring break freak neck type became a thing in Miami and South Beach. Now, someone that's born and raised in Miami and South Beach, this was this was all new, meaning the spring break freak Nick crowd. We've always been a you know party culture, nightlife culture, all good. But as someone that lives in Miami Beach, we've seen sort of the degradation of what goes down on Ocean Avenue, uh, Ocean Drive, Collins Avenue, Washington. So this year, Miami officially broke up with spring break. So they elected a new mayor. It used to be Philip Levine. They were talking about it. The new mayor of Miami Beach is like, nah, we're done with this. We all know we're big friend, friends and fans. Uh, Francis Suarez, he, he doesn't, he's not the mayor of Miami Beach. Right. He's the mayor of the city. Do you think this is Miami. a good move or a bad move? So what's been happening, the, yeah. the bottom line is, it's always the most salacious, crazy things that get the headlines. 90 plus percent of people are having fun, having a good time, spring break, we get it. But it's the 10% of people that are literally fights, shootings, murders. And Miami Beach is like, we don't need this crap. Last point, I went out to dinner the other night. The whole streets are gated off. Gated off. Meaning they're preparing for it. You know, we're doing the big event model volleyball again this year. They had to move the event because the, the city's like, nah, we're not, we're not doing this right now. So uh, I'm not shocked to see some of the... Um, Do you think yeah. for the third time, what? was this a good <laughs> say, move as a person yes, from uh, Miami? Okay. Do you think it's a good move as a person that's been here all these years? I thought we were just one of the history. No, Freak I'm asking Nick. you yes, because I do you've think lived this, here. I do this think this move? is a good move okay. uh, overall, Yeah, but there's a lot of businesses that would say otherwise. Really? Meaning, okay, uh, yes. that's what I want to hear. Okay, there's a lot of businesses. Yeah. So people don't understand. They had to implement a curfew. Is that last year or this year, by 
the way. That's every year. <laughs> Last year. That's, okay. that's my car. Exactly. That's <laughs> my car. That's <laughs> my car. <laughs> Adam's in the back. <laughs> That's Adam go. dancing and making fun of my car. That's my car. Look at that. So, so what's going on? Ruined. You have to understand, this is a segmented part. This is probably on Ocean Drive. This is crazy. This is the tourist street. Right? There what, it is. What are most That's wet people, willies. What are these people drinking? Because <laughs> Right there. Whatever's in the wet willies. Is that really Miami? Drink, yes. That's, that's last year. Yes. Yes. Jeez. Um, there was a shooting. There was a murder. This is crazy. But most businesses, bars, restaurants, nightlife... They make a lot of their money on the weekends. What happened is that they implemented a midnight curfew. All the bars, you know my relationship with Bodega. Yeah, of course. Everything had to close. So uh, as a business, as a case study like Tom would do, Bodega, bar I'm associated with, we lost a hundred grand of revenue last weekend. So that's a bottom line hit to the bar. But for overall safety, can you put a price on that? So bottom line is they're breaking up with spring break. Small businesses are taking a hit. But uh, in the spirit of not basically being a shit show. So in other words, you are going to run for office next yes, because yes. you gave the very, did you notice that answer? Very he wanted to support the. Yeah, yeah. Very now, freaky. How, how, how much are you disappointed that yeah. the party life has changed for you in Miami? As someone that <laughs> used to attend Freaknik for years, so, yeah. well, Tom, no, tell us how it goes. Actually, I know a little bit about Freaknik. Not oh. as an attendee. <laughs> Yeah, but I know yeah. the I know the history. The history of Freaknik was actually a good thing. There was a group of students that couldn't afford to travel and couldn't afford to go home at spring break because they didn't have the budget. And they're trying to go to school. You have Emory down there. You've got a, a Georgia State. You have a bunch of schools that are in right there. UGA, in Georgia Tech, everything. Tom, yeah. you well, freak. G Tech, G yeah. Tech is there. And so what they did, they created. Um, kind of it's a lot picnics. Of people don't know about Tom. No, no, no. Yeah. It's picnic <laughs> celebration and some um, go ahead, Tom, and music in the park, so that yeah. during the week of spring, he's getting break, whiter yeah. as he's talking right Tom, now. Tom, who's, <laughs> <your favorite, laughs> who's your favorite? Who's your favorite Atlanta, Atlanta rapper? <laughs> when have I picked on yeah. Dave? What is this? Yeah. <laughs> Tom, just who's your favorite freak Nick Atlanta rapper? Just I know you could rattle them off. Who's your favorite? Uh, I, I gotta go to Ludacris. Um, nice. Luke, Luke, Luke. It's not that's true. Luke. So Uncle the, the point was, it started out as a good thing and became a bad thing. It was a good thing for there is music in the park, there was things that was going on during the day and into the evenings, and it started out just as being as the kids that couldn't get home for spring break stayed in Atlanta and did something, and then it got completely out of control over the years and had to shut it down. That's what's happened to mm -hmm. South Florida. I can remember going down, I'll give you a history of Florida, in the mid-80s, there was a place right there uh, at Las Olas and um, A1A, Sunrise A1A, there was a strip down there, there was a place called the Button, Penrods, and the Candy Store. The Candy Store was owned by uh, Los Angeles comedian Flip Wilson, who way, way, way yeah. back had the Flip Wilson show. He's passed away. God rest his soul. But the spring break, I remember it down there, did not used to be mayhem. It used to be a big party. But then the years go by, it gets out of control, and the cities yeah. have to step okay. in. Did can, you, I, can I just ask a question? Sure. Because I don't understand what would happen. So you go out, you freak Nick, you bring it down here, you're drinking yeah. with your friends, you're partying. But what is the jump from just having a good time to taking a chair and throwing it at someone behind the counter at a yoga store. I'll give you the what, answer. What is the jump I'll give you the there? answer. What gets you to it, do there's that? There's three elements. Yeah. Uh, you're 20. Yeah. You're drunk. And social media. Combine that all together. Perfect storm for Tom's did, freak did, next did, situation. Did you guys know that? I'm sorry, Tom. You told me never to say anything. He was actually a pimp in college. He was Gator. <laughs> he was like, Gator, don't play that shit. Yeah. That was you, right? Is it, is it, is it, is it pa Papi <laughs> Tomas? Oh, you Papi Gator, Tomas. don't play that shit, Tom. <laughs> No, it's just like who babies that in the show? Yeah, at least he, <laughs> I don't know. It's just I, don't I was I was in L.A. by then, and me, uh, me and no, the but, but, me and the Biatches. Bitch, not gonna play that shit. <laughs> so, Dave, are you, is it safe but to say, say you were avoiding say Miami? You, you asked yes. the question when you asked the question about why people throw the the chairs and stuff. Very basic. You know, uh, emotions high, intelligence low. Okay. Yeah. When you're drinking, your emotions are high, your intelligence are low, you're not making a lot of good decisions. But let's transition into another story. You've been at parties at my house. I get pretty drunk. I've never thought yeah. of picking up a chair and throwing it's it. It's your at own house, though. This okay. is not their house. Exactly. exactly. Your house. I was, you people, take care of your own place. You also that's only fair. drink the finest tequila, Dave. Oh, I know does. that. It does. So these guys are drinking. By the way, Dave's the a better basketball player when he drinks more. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh. He didn't drink a lot with me, though. Finger roll. One shot. One shot. And, and That's all I need. That was incredible. And parties at your house are different. No one's going to throw a $1,200 chair with fine Italian leather. Yeah, That's what like, are you, nuts? It's a little different nowadays, yeah. Dave. Rob, can we, can we, do you have that clip? Because I'd like to transition into a, a uh, uh, interview that happened recently with uh, Don Lemon and Elon Musk. And apparently, uh, Don, just a few minutes before what? we went live podcast, he had some... Uh, 
he, he feels like Elon Musk disrespected him. And, and f- folks, please be gentle with the oh, reaction God. to this. Go, go ahead, Rob. Look at the modern People phone. have been asking me what I meant by when I said he did not like answering questions or being held to account from people like me. Uh, uh, and so some people took it to mean a racial thing. I meant oh, someone who has a different worldview. Yeah. But since people raised it and you said what you said, oh, yeah, do you yeah. think that he was uncomfortable? I didn't want to go there. Oh, yes, you did. Do you think he was uncomfortable mm-hmm. sitting in front of a gay black guy? Oh, God, like That's so pathetic. Oh, uh, probably more gay than black, I would think. What? I hate to say what? that, but um, what? I don't know. He's I don't more know. gay than black. I don't, I don't I so she's saying that he's white. Saying Don Lemon is more gay than black. I mean, yeah, no, no, that, no, Elon offended, was more comfortable offended, with the uh, gay than the black. Because I thought that was offensive. I thought, yeah. like, this is the lady. Don, you're more gay than black. By the way, Don, you're black. Don, wait, 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 gay is not. You're black. <laughs> by the like, by the way, this is Kara Swisher, who a week ago was on national TV saying that the San Francisco thing was overblown for ratings. This is her. And people are saying overblown for ratings. This is a poop map. This is the number of arrests for people that are using needles in front yeah. of my house. This is the same reporter that uh, did that. By the way, she's on this book tour, right? Right by, now, by the so. way, and that's that's the you know that's the go to to the left. If nobody's paying attention and nobody's listening, it must be because I'm 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 black or I'm get like it's it's the same playbook. It's just so damn pathetic. And uh, as an interviewer, as an interviewer to to lay back on that after you know he got owned in his own interview because he owned himself. If you, if we dissected it on my show, Elon. <laughs> And, and having met him a couple times, this, is a, this guy has incredible, generous spirit. He sits there. You can see him thinking everything through, not giving canned answers. He's doing everything that you would want to do when you're sitting down with, with a great person, right? And, and Don is actually reversing all of his old positions. Did you ever see, there's a couple uh, pieces from Lemon about 10 years ago where he talks about how the black community should yep. actually maybe have two parents. Pick and up do their pull parents, pants, get it together. All of yeah. this stuff. And now he's reversing it in real time because he feels that, you know, he's not part of the system anymore. And the fact that the guy, he didn't get fired. You know, he, he, he keeps claiming that he got fired by Elon. He demanded, I'm sure you guys covered it, five million bucks, a five mm-hmm. million dollar advance, a cyber truck and equity in the company. But there was no deal. He didn't get yeah. fired. Elon didn't give him a piece of paper and say you're getting. He was just on the platform, like we're all on the platform. So, and then he goes on CNN, the network that fired him, to claim that Elon fired. It's just, it's just, this need to be the victim. It is just so. Can I ask you a question a, about Don specifically, plan. as someone that is an interviewer, as a host, has had very uncomfortable conversations with yeah. a, 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 a wide array of people. What do you think his actual agenda was? Like the, a lot of it was gotcha questions. He's sitting there with Elon Musk. I, I would be thinking, hey, if this is going to be my new quote unquote boss who's about to pay me five million bucks, I might not push the limit. Do you think there was a further agenda? People oh. basically saying do something. What's your yeah? Thought? The agenda is I, he wants back in the game. You know, he he's been handed his hat. He's out of the game. He got fired by CNN for being a hack, which has nothing to do with him being black nor gay. Actually, you could argue that that has clearly helped his career because yeah. he has no discernible talent. So, and he's not a particularly good <laughs> interviewer, right. Right? right? So, like, you were helped by those things. So, but putting that aside, he clearly was. This is my shot. You know what it's like. Like, you're sitting down with someone big. You feel that the machine that you want to, or the game that you want to play in, you're going to get some cred if you take him out. Mm-hmm. And Elon was just I, the the thing that's great about him is you can see him thinking it through when he's answering the questions. There is no canned answer there and that is a beautiful thing so when Don is doing this bullshit that he doesn't even believe you know he's basically telling Elon censor more censor more and Elon's answer you know you love censorship so much you can taste it and it's like that Mm. is right so Lemon is trying to he's basically trying to bow at the altar of a machine that has no use for him anymore so then at the end well I'm gay and black so please watch my show you see a really uh, important thing he in it for the machine, I felt when I stepped back and looked at it and I saw Elon's comment says, I think Jeff Zucker wrote those questions for you. E- Elon <clears throat> tweeted that. I think you're right. I think he's been outside, wants to get back inside, and from inside the echo chamber, the bubble of his own liberal thought and those that he salutes, this was an audition to get back into the machine. Well, because th- you guys know this in, in that you've all built this, which is pretty freaking amazing, and I built my show. No one is going to subscribe to Don Lemon, right? There is no <laughs> fan of Don Lemon. I'll give you $5 a month, Don Lemon. 
Lemon to be a gay black interviewer. Nobody's going to do that. He's not going to generate enough clicks unless he does this. Mm -hmm. So if he's not in the machine, well, then he's independent. But you can only be independent if, if you're good and people care about you. So he's he's grasping at a bunch of stuff. He's got a, you know, he's probably enjoying this right now, uh, right? Because everybody's talking about it for a couple of days, but yes. it doesn't work in terms of building a business. No, because what it also does is, you know, it lacks um, a genuine approach of wanting to have somebody on a show. And the way, you know, he's interviewing him is on three by five cards mm -hmm. that somebody probably wrote and gave him. And that's a, like when I do a town hall. We'll have a list of questions that we'll come up with, and we'll have it on three by five cards that we go through. Podcasts, we're just having a conversation. Maybe we'll bring up a story and we'll get into it, right? Or even an interview where it's a one-on-one -on -one interview, you're just kind of going and talking to the person yeah. based on an outline of five or six or seven uh, issues that you want to go through, and then you process it, right? The transition from that space into podcasting, this was more of a CNN-style yeah. interview. And I don't know if... You know, if if sometimes when you're going from you realize I know what I'm doing, I'm going from this to this to this. They they're kind of like, I don't need anyone's advice. I know what I'm doing. It's a very big transition into this game. It's a different game. By the way, again, Shannon Sharp was able to pull it off because Shannon Sharp was able to do a great interview just talking to the people. And it takes off. It's not for everybody. We'll see how he does. I actually enjoyed the interview with him and uh, uh, Musk. I watched the whole thing. And I enjoyed it because I enjoyed the way Musk handled him trying to corner him. And it didn't happen. Next story. By the way, while we're talking about all these things with Miami, okay, shutting down, you know, 250 arrests. We're not doing this again. All this other business. On the opposite side, New York Times comes out with an article. And I want to read this to you, okay? Um, survey. Only half of New Yorkers plan to stay in Democrat city, okay? So only half of New Yorkers plan to stay in Democrat city, according to the survey of more than 6,600 New York City households reported the New York Times. This is coming from New York Times, by the way. But, 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 his fragile, and then this goes to Breitbart's story, Joe Biden received 76% of New York City's vote in 2020, okay? 76% of New York City's vote in 2020, and Democrat Eric Adams received 66 percent of New York City mayoral vote in 2021. So why is everyone so unhappy with New York City when everyone's getting exactly what they voted for? Unhappy, these Democrats, uh, Democrats are especially compared to seven years ago, only 39 percent are content with the state of public education currently right now. 37 percent are happy with the level of public safety in their neighborhoods, and only 34 percent are satisfied with the neighborhood's cleanliness. Less than a third, less than a third rate cities' quality of life as excellent or good. Less than a third quality of life, excellent or good. Less than a quarter are content with the overall quality of government services. Y you know, do you think it gets to a point where bad policies are so bad that people on the opposing side even say, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore, Tom. Yeah, I do. And I think if you know your history, and I'll be quick with this, go back and look what the survey said, and that led to the election of Mayor Giuliani. And we can say what you want about him uh, now in association with Trump and things he's had, but go back and look at what led to Mayor Rudy Giuliani being elected. It was a similar time with a bunch of things that were completely out of hand, and the people voted the other way. People voted the other way. And, and, and by the Giuliani, way, he and, came but, in and look what he did. But and, there's a bigger problem now, which is that uh, New York as a state, who someone could check the numbers on this. I think the state itself has lost about 500,000 people since COVID, right? Net. So, right. So 500,000 and many of them are now voting the right way in Florida. So Florida is getting redder. And then by these people leaving, New York is thus getting bluer. So now you've, you've put a divide there, but also there is no Giuliani left in New York. We've talked about, I think we mm -hmm. talked about it on mm -hmm. uh, when we did the live mm -hmm. show here with him. There is no Rudy left there that thinks that they can fix it. Now, maybe the miracle person shows up and, and can really reverse the direction of the, of the entire machine, 
but probably not. When uh, when Kathy Hochul, who was one of the worst COVID maniacs in the country, when she got elected, which wasn't a re-election, it was her first election because she obviously took over for Cuomo, she only won by about 500,000 votes for governor this last time. To Zeldin. But to Zeldin, yeah. who nobody knew two weeks before That's the right. election. He was a little That's congressman right. nobody had heard of. So she wins by 500,000 votes, but we know about 500,000 people left the state. Now, it's not to say every single one of them would have, would have voted that way. But the point is the divide now has gotten bigger and bigger. And I think we're just going to, there's almost no way to reverse that. Can you imagine a, a sane, let's say a somewhat conservative leaning New Yorker saying, I'm going to run for, for mayor of New York and winning? How, how would it be possible? Well, I, I think, I think I'm telling you, I know this sounds crazy and bold, but I think Trump's camp is convinced they can flip New York. Okay. I think they think there's a chance mm. they can flip New York. Do you know do, what? Do you think they can flip New York? Well, I th- I think I think right now, you know, if you're if you're playing a, um, if you're playing a game and you're looking at the score and what happened over the years and how close it is, it's not close. The Dems are still ahead, but the more and more and more. Give you an example, Stephen A. Smith. Can you pull up Stephen A. Smith? By the way, the clip with Chris Cuomo. So the, both Chris Cuomo and Stephen A. Smith are probably voting left and have their entire lives, okay? Presidents, whites. Let's just, Cuomo, last name, father, Mario, brother, Andrew, CNN. That's his background. That's what he's done. We know where he's probably going to lean politically. Stephen A. Smith is fair. He'll give his thoughts and his opinions, but he's also probably voting the other side. Again, folks, I don't know. I'm not speaking. I'm just saying probably. Mm -hmm. I'm giving guesstimation. They can come out and say, Patrick, you're wrong. You know, we vote in a different way. But I'm saying that's probably where they are. But watch what Stephen A. Smith says that what's not working today. Watch this. It's good to have you. I got a couple of topics for you. It's a a beautiful shirt. First thing is, you don't like the way the media played the Trump bloodbath situation. Why? Well, first of all, I thought that he was talking about the United States and China and the auto industry. And I thought that they mm-hmm. used it as an opportunity to expose and exploit the kind of things that they wanted to about Donald Trump. Fair enough. The problem mm-hmm. is, is that he's kicking their tail. That's really what this comes down to. Uh, according to the polls, he's up, he's gaining momentum. And when you use these kind of tactics and it it comes with a question mark. It comes with some trepidation. I don't think that's something that is, it has shown itself to work against Trump over the last few months or so. I mean, the guy's got four indictments, 91 counts against him. He's been impeached twice. He's got, he just lost a civil case where he was ordered to pay in excess of $400 million. And he keeps gaining campaign dollars. He keeps gaining momentum. And somehow, some way, they keep using the same old tactics. That was really my point. It's not working. It's not being effective. He's literally kicking their butts and they've got to get their act together and find a different strategy because the fear mongering over the kind of things that may come out of his mouth is not the kind of tactics that have proven to work against this man, at least as of late. Pause it right there. Okay, so check this out. You hear Stephen A. Smith. He's a New York guy. You can just listen to him. Mm-hmm. He's an East Coast guy, right? Yeah. And he's saying this. And by the way, he works for an organization <laughs> that got rid of a lot of people that were on the right side that maybe right. they didn't work out or you stopped hearing from them. We can name some of these guys. You ever sit there and you're like, what happened to Broussard? What happened to Sage? What happened to all of the, where did they go all of a sudden? That was the organization. Even when I was sitting down with Stephen A and I was interviewing him when we were in New York at ESPN, you know what his handler kept telling Mario? He kept telling Mario. Hey, Mario, Patrick better not ask any politics. Stephen A. doesn't want to address any political questions. Mm. And I said, does Stephen A. not want to answer political (laughs) questions? Or does ESPN not want Stephen A. to be wanting to answer political questions? So you you just kind of watch to see what's going on. Do you think common sense is going to prevail? Like, maybe even let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Rob, can you run a poll for me? Run a poll and say, chances Trump wins New York, okay? Put less than 25%, put 25 to 50%, put 50% plus, okay? Chances he wins New York. And by the way, folks, while you're uh, voting for this, don't vote emotionally. Actually, think about it. It's very, very hard to beat New York. What do you think is going to happen? Can we get the numbers on New York last time? That would be that would be. We, we pulled it up the other day, yeah. but it was like 50, 46, 40, 50. I don't know what the. I have but it was something like. I sent Rob at current numbers. Uh, 
And by the way, just a heads up, all the next that I get on, on the app, all the majority of the New Yorkers, from cops to business people to everybody, I'm not joking, Dave, mm -hmm. all of them, every single one of them is like, hey, man, what the, like, can you, you know guys talk, talk about this problem, talk about this problem, I'm moving, how's Florida, I'm coming. Every single New Yorker that I speak to, shout out to everybody that I talk to on my neck, they're all like, bro, I'm talking about law enforcement guys that yep. own pizza shops. They're like, this is just effing crazy. They're like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I, I could show you, I can't do it on air, but yeah. I could show you easily 10 conversations I'm having with guys that were NYPD, former mm. NYPD, yeah. that all have left. Yep. And most of them are here now. And that's, again, it goes to that divide. You start <clears throat> losing all of the good people. So the question is, even if Trump's policies make more sense, and even if everyone's like, you know, I've had it, they're roasting rats on the subway, this is a problem. Uh, there may just not be a good enough good people left and you got you got to give the devil his due the media has confused people and lied to people about so much that people just vote the wrong way there you go 61 38 <laughs> but keep in mind keep in yeah. mind when this was <clears throat> this vote was when 2020 november 2020 mm -hmm. what COVID. happened to new york post oh, yeah. november totally different. 2020 totally different if i can give a little perspective on this it's and i sent you some numbers to validate this look the big three blue liberal states we all know this california New York, and then if you want to put Illinois as a second runner-up, you know, second city. Uh, those are the big three. But if you actually peel back the numbers and you actually take a look at the bigger context of what's going on in California, your guy's state in New York, it's not even close. Because if you look in the at the sort of the like the zeitgeist of each of these cities, New York is capitalism. It's Wall Street. Is you know, Vinny's from Yonkers over here. There's it. like this, what the fuck is going on here type of vibe. California is totally different. Hollywood, Silicon Valley, it's literally left, far left. So if you look at the numbers, Rob, Trump has closed the gap by 10. So if you look at the numbers now, there's only a basically a 10-point lead in New York between Biden and Trump, whether it's 42, 32, or 46, 36. But if you go to California, it's actually still a 20-point lead, that same 20-point lead that Biden beat Trump in, in 2020. So something in the DNA of New Yorkers yeah. is basically saying, I'm not just going to go along with the blue no matter who mantra. What's that syndrome where you like your abuser and you fall in love with it? Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. That's yeah. exactly what, because it's it, it's that close still. That means people are just like, no, I, anything but Trump. And they're willing to suffer just yeah. because they the, the orange bad man Hitler guy, that's what they don't but want. Let's also not forget, you know, where's Trump from? New York. New York. Oh, New York. New York. There's no Trump. Not yeah. just the political Trump. The 2016 of down course. the escalator the home Trump. Alone, home Alone You're talking Trump. about the, <laughs> which the Home Alone Which isn't on the cable anymore. It's not on cable anymore. Yeah. The bankruptcy Trump. The yeah. casino Trump. Uh, the Trump. Uh, so, like, there's a deep, deep history with I, Trump. I think, Good and I bad. think uh, uh, New York is not afraid to take a stand. And everybody... <laughs> Everybody, but, sounds but, like an Eminem song. They, they, they yeah, can yeah, come take his yeah, hand, yeah, and they can we'll walk, this road, this, together, walk this, right? this road together uh, through the storm. Through and the I, storm. I think New York's capable of doing that. A, a poet said that once, That's right? An amazing. But here's the poll for you: three thousand people voted, less than twenty-five percent. Uh, twenty-eight percent, twenty-five to fifty percent chance, forty-five, fifty plus twenty-eight. So. You know, it, it's it's to say 73 says there's a less than 50 yeah. 50 percent chance he wins. I, I, unfortunately, 28 uh, percent of our audience is now officially delusional if they think there's a greater than 50 percent chance that Trump wins New no. York. But respect well, to you guys out there. Words talk, numbers scream. Could you pop back to the polls? Really, the Siena polls. Take a look at the most recent Siena poll. Add those together. Biden 42, Trump 32. That is 75%. That means 25% of the people in that poll, these are the independents right now that on polling are saying neither. And it's showing up a lot. Mm -hmm. You can go to all the polling places. But this is the new strength of the American independent voter that people are not looking at this in the polls. Which way are those indies going to break when the rubber hits the road and the two conventions come and go and it gets serious and they're looking at the economy, yeah. they're looking at the border and it's time to vote. Well, if you look at take so, a closer so, look so at the numbers. Oh, think sorry. about this. What are the chances? What, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Adam. No, I was Finish just going to say those num there's actually numbers that support what Tom is saying. Basically, Kennedy, RFK, is getting about 10 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. And the leftist communist Cornell West is taking about 5 percent in New York. But watch so this. That's how the numbers well, but watch this. This is what's interesting. This is what's interesting. When did you think a guy named uh, uh, Mark Cuban would defend Trump. When did you think a guy 
Kevin O'Leary would come out this publicly mm. defending a judge out of New York. Kevin O'Leary says New York Attorney General Letitia James threat to seize Trump's asset is an attack on America. He contem- condemns New York Attorney General Letitia James threat to seize Trump's assets, labeling it an attack on America, citing the significance of property rights and due process. You think about America, the reason this is the number one economy on earth is that we have laws and we have due process and we have property rights. O'Leary expresses concern over the unprecedented nature of James's action, noting the lack of precedent for a 30-day bond requirement and its potential impact on foreign investments. The concept of seizing assets is on a 30-day bond number has never been issued. No insurance company has ever issued anything near this, so there's no chance it was going to happen. The legal dispute arises... I mean, this is him saying the clip, and, and how long is this, Rob? Because I'm pretty much done with what he said. About a minute. Okay, it's, it's fine. I mean, I pretty much read what he said. Yeah. The legal dispute arises from James' lawsuit against the, Trump, against the Trump Organization for Fraud and Overvaluation of Assets, with Trump ordered to pay $350 million in damages by March 25th. And he, you know, they're trying to right now find a way. And by the way, if, if he doesn't come up with the money on Monday— do you know what the lady on The View said the other day? Do you know what Letitia Shenton James said the other day? Do you know they can't, you know how they said, we can't wait for them to sit in court like this yeah. and have to answer questions? Do you know on The View, they're like, oh, I just can't wait to see Disgusting. his assets being seized. I just can't wait to see that happen. They're celebrating this happening. But Pat, I, I'm sure you know this, but the point, the, the part that you didn't mention there is that the banks got paid back. Everybody was made whole. Of course. He makes a point of saying this in, in the CNN clip. So everyone was made whole. And this idea that you can just overvalue all your companies and the banks will give you whatever you it's want. Not is, works. It's not how anyone no. that buys a house, you buy a million dollar house, you got to put 20% down. You need an $800,000 loan, but you can't just say to the bank, I would like $800,000, please. And that you, they look at the house, they see the comps, all, all the obvious and You stuff can't that, even tell the bank, I think <laughs> this is a $50 million property. No, it's called, someone's got to go do the appraisal. Yeah, well, yeah we'll that, do the underwriting we'll do the appraisal mr buyer can you just stand over there for a minute with your realtor well that's why the mar-a-lago thing so mar-a-lago they said it's valued at 18 million it's 17 acres an acre there on the water in west palm an acre alone is easy five mil so like you just extrapolate that and then 18 18 acres is special so now you're gonna have a premium just none of it makes any sense but this is what they do and again i think this is why i'm not bullish on trump winning new york because there are not a, enough good people left who get what the issues are and and that leads just a, the divide to just go, grow and grow and grow rob i'm going to send this to you based on what um dave just said where they, they were cnn all bragging about the fact that this is not a you know they're telling a story when Letitia james came out saying mar lago is worth 18 million dollars right watch this watch this cnn story i'm just going to give you the screenshot if you can pull it up rob i just literally texted it to you Look what even CNN has mar lago worth if he does a fire sale. Even CNN knows it's worth $240 million, right. okay? Do you realize this? They just pay tell this story. So Trump has until Monday to pay 454 in a fraud case. If he misses the deadline, the New York AG can start seizing his properties. Properties Trump could sell on a fire sale today. On a fire sale, even CNN says... They can get $240 million from our lago. I mean, look, you've been there. The place could use a little paint job. You know, they've got some cracks in the walls. There's some stuff that could be sure. fixed. But you know what? If they can get this thing for 18, how about we'll all split? Oh, I'm all yeah. in. Uh, yeah, it's not even a it. question. Let's do it. But, but here's my question, you guys. Uh, from a legal standpoint, how the hell can she get away with this for this long and get to the point where they're going to seize this shit? What does that say about our legal system? But Dave? what does it say about New York? That's, oh. that's the point I'm trying to drive home. And that's what O'Leary is saying. This has nothing to do with Trump. The system is now so corrupt and it is so broken and there aren't enough good DAs left in New York. There aren't enough good lawyers. All of the people that are taking their businesses out of there, Elon taking, uh, what was it, the uh, the X Corporation out of Delaware. Yep. Like, we're just going to see that divide continue and continue. Mm-hmm. So the guy, the Rudy that was waiting when David Dinkins was destroying New York City, he doesn't live in New York in 2024. And that that is the problem. I have a question for our friend Dave Rubin. I think he'd be the perf- perfect person to answer this. You know, the one, the one thing you would hear about Trump, whether you like him or don't like him, is like, what was the moment that he lost your vote? What was that moment? What was the moment that he 
gained your vote. You know, the every, listen, 90% of the country has made up their mind. I'm talking about the movable middle, the independents, as you call them, the disaffected liberals, all yeah. that. We all remember the moments that people would basically highlight of when they lost Trump, like the David Duke moment, the both sides moment, the John McCain. I like my people captured that whole moment. I like my people not captured. What do you think the moment is for the general American of why they're going to go back to Trump, meaning the capitalists, the Kevin O'Leary's of the world, the Mark Cubans of the world, their moment is now the money, bro. Like, you know, I might not like Trump's rhetoric, but when you start coming after hundreds of millions of dollars, they're next, I'm right. playing that they game. They can be next. What right. do you think the movable middle's moment is to go back to Trump? The well, wokeness, the border. What do you think it is? The Cuban one is kind of funny because he's so wrong about everything, especially mm -hmm. as it relates to woke. And even now he's like, well, I do like my money, so I guess I should maybe, right. you know, kind of defend Trump on this thing. I would say the, the moment for, I can tell you the moment for me because I didn't vote for Trump the first time I voted for Gary Johnson and I should be judged accordingly Aleppo. but then but then it was about two years into Trump and I was like wait things are kind of working peace yeah. in the Middle East economy's chugging along everything you know the pre-COVID and then one day I was uh I was having lunch in Beverly Hills and I happened to drive by a Trump rally on on Rodeo Drive over there and I was like you know what I've never been to one of these things let me, let me just see what's going on I was kind of coming around and I went there and it was the most joyous party of America loving people. And they had blacks for Trump and gays for Trump and Latinos for Trump and all of that. And virtually everyone there knew me and everybody was so excited that I was there that the next week I said, I said to Dennis Prager, Hey, you want to go to this thing? See what's going on. I yeah. started bringing more and more people. And Dennis was already on the, on the Trump train, but it, there was, it, it had nothing to do with a political ideology per se. It didn't, it didn't, it wasn't like, oh, I'm for Trump. So that means I they believe partied it. better. It, I mean, stuff but, that matters. It, well, it was just like, I love America more. Yeah. And, and, and it wasn't like, okay, you better have 15 week abortion <clears> and you had <throat> better have cap gain tax of this. It was that we love this country. We want to fix this country. And I think more and more as the Biden thing goes off the yeah. deep end. And I think especially with the border, I think more and more people are just going to be like, you know what? I can't have gangs of mm -hmm. cannibals running around the city that I live in. So Do you think okay, right now the, the border is the number one yeah. issue oh, that yeah. will move people from left? Oh, yeah. back so let me right. ask you this. When oh, was sir. it? When was it for you? Well, it's been a slow drip. You know, thanks. Uh, yeah. Sit next to you. And obviously Dave Rubin working on this guy for years. Yeah, I think. For me, I mean, I'm in the same camp as probably an Elon Musk or a Joe Rogan where none of those guys were voting for Trump. I don't think ever. But at some point, you have to take a look at the landscape and say, all right, clearly the game has changed. Clearly the media has lied to me. Clearly we've been manipulated. Clearly a lot of the things that we thought about Trump or thought about certain things were fabricated by the media. Most people are not going to change overnight. Most people, it's going to be a slow move. I think it's just the reality of what's going on in America as a dude who actually certainly thinks that only women can have babies and that men can't transition like this and believes in borders. Uh, I think there's a slow drip to be like, what the so is going you, on? So for you, yeah. it's a slow drip yes. on what happened. Yeah. Okay. I so, think the so would you would you would you say a part of it is the unfair treatment where it's like this is getting a little bit too much at this point? Do you think you would put that at the top? Where what, what are they doing to this? I think guy that's a, that's a part of it. That's not number one. I think number one is genuinely the border. Like what is happening here, guys? Like what you know? Right, and then the, right. uh, also an element is what the Democratic Party even stands for at this point. It used to be blue collar, the workers, you know, equal wages, all because that. Now it's Silicon Valley leftists and Harvard educated how many idiots. People you think there, how many people you think there are like Adam on where he was the first time we spoke? First time I spoke to him, I, I uh, when he, he wanted to come down, he reaches out and, you know, he says, hey, Pat, you know, uh, I'm making a major life change. I want to come to Dallas. And I want to come join Valley 10. I say, you realize this is not Miami, bro. Like, there is no Freaknik here. So I, 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 I tell him there's <laughs> no Tom's not here. I'll, I'll, no. I'll make that yeah. sacrifice. <laughs> but, but so, so yeah. he, he, we're talking. I said, so where do you stand with politics? Well, you know, I just kind of like to hear everybody's on a. So tell me about uh, Trump. What do you think about Trump? And, and literally, the conversation got uncomfortable. And I'm sure you remember this. Did he cry? He, no, he didn't. Because he was like, well, um, why? I mean, you know. I, <laughs> you mean, I didn't say not a fan. Not no, he, my, you know, not, he, not our best and brightest. He tried to kind of yeah. go through it because you're almost like, I'm like, is this guy a guy that you can have a conversation with? Or are you so much yeah. like deranged that there's no logic that you can have? And then he's like, yeah, it's kind of, okay, cool. Sounds good. Then he came and we started having a conversation. But, but the, 
But you, you were going to say no, something? No, you asked me if I was a Bernie guy. I said, definitely not. But who, you asked me, who's your guy? Who did I say? Mansion. I said, Joe Manchin. Yeah. If you're like a, said, so a Democrat who gets a, a, a elected in a red s a state over and over again, yeah. I like that guy. To yeah. directly answer your question, though, yeah. you were asking how, how many of those people are there. Yeah. I, I talk, I mean, this is what I have focused yes. on for yeah. the last five years, because I think the only real group of people who can move in America are the disaffected libs. And I think particularly over the last five months, mm -hmm. because of immigration, they're the ones that can move right now. There's no, yes, are there disaffected Republicans who are like, ah, you know, the never Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. There, of course there are, but they didn't vote for him last time. Right. There are an awful lot of old school liberals. Liberals, JFK liberals, decent people like you, the Thank sort of you, apolitical independent. That's a chunk of people that can move. Actually, when you were on with Marr on Club Random and you kind of challenged him and I did the same thing with him and it helps because he's stoned and drunk. So you can kind of <laughs> you can yeah. kind of work him. Um, but you basically said to him, what are the good things Biden has done? And he really didn't have much. Right. And we can all point to the bad things Biden has done as it relates to the economy and, and particularly the border and the rest of it. And a lot of people see that. Even apolitical people see the crime going up in the streets and everything else. So the decent liberal mm -hmm. who is suddenly like, you know what? My son thinks he's a girl. There's a cannibal living two blocks over. You're allowed to take over people's houses and they won't kick you out. You see that story out of mm -hmm. New York now? Yeah. Do you they're, have that story, Rob? They're just, what page is they're the story just on? stacking a whole bunch of insane shit. And the good mm -hmm. libs, and by the way, that was part of my argument for DeSantis was the good libs will much more easily be able to vote for DeSantis than Trump. Yeah. But I think Trump has an opportunity. Now. You're I, by the way, one I, story have out to go, I have to go to that story. I have to it's, go it's to that not, story. Not, no, yeah, no. Yeah. Check this out. By the way, homeowner... Okay, not homeowners, uh, homeowner, this lady who's a homeowner <laughs> of a million dollar property detained for allegedly kicking squatters out of own home. Her house. Did you hear what I just read? Yeah. Okay. So she gets detained, if you have the video, Rob, for asking people who are not paying rent to leave her house, she gets arrested. Okay. This is Babylon B. Is so this is, this is not it's Babylon real. B. This is not satire. This is definitely not onion. This is real. <laughs> but let me read this to you. Okay, let me read this to you. Adele Andal Andalaro was detained by police after attempting to remove squatters from her inherited one million dollar home in Queens, which she discovered had been illegally occupied and locked by squatters. Video footage captured Andalaro confronting the squatters after hiring a locksmith to regain access to her property. Is this it, Rob? Is this the clip? Yeah. This is okay. It. So regain access to her property. One squatter claiming to be on a lease but failing to provide documentation when pressed by reporters. Go ahead and play this clip, Rob. Go ahead. You shouldn't be trying to steal my house. Yes, you are. So, Adele, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. For what? For being, in my, for being in my own home. Adele Andaloro says the intruders moved in about six weeks ago. They changed the entire front Why door. Why would somebody and live in New York? Her home. Right. Yeah. I don't want to. Exactly. Yes. She does. Yes. But then once again, you should know how the law works. How the law works. <laughs> you know how it works. There's rules to the <laughs> as you got to go to court and send me to civil court. The woman managed to get inside wow. and lock the squatters out, but the men stormed back inside. Ah, 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 ah. not going on. Call the police again. The men called the police on her and got her arrested for the illegal eviction. Are so why is it kidding? that I have to leave and he doesn't have to leave? Because technically she can't be kicked out. You That's the court. law. They claimed yep. they've been renting the property since October, but failed to provide any documentation. By the time that someone does their investigation, we'll be well over the 30 days and this man will have stolen my home. You shouldn't be... That's on so 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 here's a commercial for New York City. Yeah. This is for Queens, right? This is yeah. a commercial for New York. Yep. You just saw that, right? Yep. First, a person can come out after you paid off the debt for a loan that you had, the appraisal, everything done legally. She can come back later on, 20, 30 years later, and say, No, you owe now four hundred million dollars. Yep. For all the debt, they're like, no, we got our bet. Then you can own a home in New York, and somebody can come in and claim they've been paying rent since October, cannot prove documentation. Then you who owns the home is still being arrested. This doesn't sell the dream. No wonder half of the people in New York are thinking about moving to a different city. And then think how freaking ridiculous it is that the cops then have to enforce that. Yeah. And you've, you've also degraded the level of person that is going to be an officer in New York now. Wow. Yep. So instead of them dealing with real crime and now they've got the freaking yeah. National Guard in the subway, you've got cops kicking out, Insane. arresting people who own the house. Have but the that's what O'Leary was talking the about. The issue is the laws. This is 
Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening. This is about liberal leadership. They made the laws. That poor cop was saying, and I feel for the cop, he said, technically, bop, 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 because it's the law. They made the laws. Liberals made the laws to enable the seizure this way by you know, sitting in a vacant home for 30 days and then they change the locks. So that, that, that homeless guy is saying, I don't know. I don't want what's right. I want the law. And the law is bad. This is what liberal policies do. This is and, failure. And by the way, just because of stuff like that, there was a TikTok illegal saying if a house is not inhibited because they're, they're paying attention. He's the doing illegal, a how-to video. He's going see, yeah. a how-to video on TikTok going, uh, he's telling illegals how to invade, squat You're the joking. Ho- I, yeah. Rob, yeah, yeah. Send Rob his name, I'll You're send joking. Send it not, to Rob. I'm not even joking. Oh, you're that's sending it, that. That's, it. that's the guy it? right there. Listen, listen to this piece of shit. Sorry for my language. I have to. I'm, I, it drives me nuts. Rob, the subtitles. It's in Spanish. Yeah, but the subtitles tell us. So basically, he's he's invade a casa. He's in, we are he, able to invade a house. Is that the basically that saying Spanish? But what he said. Pensado invadir una casa en Junay State. Yeah. Ya que me enteré que existe una ley que dice que si una casa no está habitada, podemos expropiarla. Capichi, muchachos, aquí en Yunei State también se aplica la de invasión de terreno. Wow. Y creo que I ese será be, mi próximo my next negocio. Business invading. Invadir wow. Casas abandoned houses since I have looked. Ya que me he unos he looks really happy about it, too. Right? Codes with my friend Africans, y me and they told me that they have already taken about seven houses. And as the saying goes, Daddy, dicho, papi, you have to look for the return. And the, the return right now is to invade houses since we are not in a street situation. That is and guess what? And guess what? Right so guys, thank thank Joe Biden and Mallorca is the little rat. Think and this is just these are houses that nobody's in right now. Wait till they're like, you know what? Yes, F this, it. Go ahead, Dave. No, please. this is the point because you know in El Salvador, which now is turning around because of Bukele and he's yeah. arresting all of these people. Yeah. I was in San Salvador maybe 12, 13 years ago. And at the time, my brother-in-law was working there. We, you know, it was crazy crime. And you basically had to have armed guards everywhere you go and stay behind barbed wire and all that. Uh, but th- what the gangs were doing, it wasn't that they were just walking into houses that were empty. They would just walk into houses that had people there and just kick them out of the houses. And that's exactly right, Vinny. They are, the next thing is that they will literally walk into your house. They'll kick you out of the house. The police aren't going to do jack shit because yep. they're not qualified to do anything anymore. And they don't. They also don't want to be called racist of and course. everything else. Yep. And you're going to have basically gang lords taking over suburban areas. And, and again, it gets to the point that there will be nobody left in these states and cities to do do anything and, about and, this and is why that, that uh, be, yeah. one thing for Dave. This is why your mantra, what uh, crazy world, sane views, makes yeah. so much more sense right now. The first video of the guy taking over the New York apartment, then you have this guy right now. This guy went from a squatter to a legal scholar like that. He's like, well, <laughs> according to bylaw 42069, uh, finders, keepers, losers, weepers out here. It's like, where'd you get that? And they said that it's a landlord tenant issue. No, it's a landlord criminal issue. Speaking of criminal, I don't know where the free speech and inciting violence or exciting uh, inciting crime, the, the line on that, but this is clearly incitement of crime. There was, and there's another one, because, you know, once you go down this deep dive, and it's like, like they're hiding this shit. Yeah. There was one guy that made another video, Dave, I'm pretty sure you saw it. He has a baby, and he's saying in Spanish, he's like, look, all you have to do, yeah. come here and have a baby. They can't kick you out. They can't kick you out. And thank God, because how God works sometimes. He made another video crying. Uh, child services came and took the baby away because he made that stupid ass video and they got his ass and they're probably going to try to deport him. By, Ridiculous. By, 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 the, by the way, while this is going on, there's a couple things I do want to just kind of uh, uh, go through right now. And then Rob, I want you to pull up the clip. If you don't mind, pull up the clip of AOC. Okay. AOC and Byron uh, uh, Donald. So if you can pull this up. So here's AOC going against uh, Tony Boblinski, Bob- Bob- who did business with the Bidens, and look how she asks the question, and when she stops Tony from speaking, then watch what Byron shows at the end of his clip. You have to see this, folks. Mm, yeah. Go ahead, Rob. I have a quick question. <laughs> Simple. Mm. Is it your testimony today that you personally witnessed President Joe Biden 
commit a crime. I believe the fact that he was sitting with me while I was putting together a Did you deal. witness the president <laughs> commit a crime? Is it your testimony today? Yes. And what crime do you uh, have you witnessed? How much time do I have to go uh -huh. through it? It is simple. <laughs> you name the crime. What? Did you watch him steal something? Cor corruption statutes, you, RICO and conspiracy. What is it? What is, are, uh, what is the crime, sir? You, you, Specifically. You, just, uh, you, keep, uh, you asked me to answer the question. I answered the question. No. Rico, you're obviously not familiar with corruption. <laughs> Excuse statutes. me, sir. Excuse Fire me, up. sir. Such an angry Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Rico is not a crime. It is a category. What I is know. the oh. category of crime that you're then charged You have charges. A long hundred. You have charges. Yeah. Sir, please you want me to name, name the exact statute on Rico. Yes. I'll, well, it's funny in this committee room, everyone's not here. There's over eight. All right, sir. I reclaim my time. Lawyers that I went to law school. I reclaim I'll leave my it up time. To you guys. Okay, to thank you, the sir. I reclaim my time. Rico. Clearly, what we are seeing here today is a continuation of the 15-month saga of the Republican That's majority insane. lost in the desert. Impeachment Lost 101. The, had to get to my speech. The majority party or whomever is raising impeachment okay, so must accuse doing, you can go the president go play. of a when, high when, crime and that's what you guys did to But go ahead and play the Byron Donald clip. Now watch this. Watch what he does, okay? I love one that. by one by one in the proper sequence of proof of checks. Checks. And then look at when Biden gets his check, what the date is. And look what he put in the description of why he got that money. Go ahead, Rob. Now, to the money flow, because this is, this is where the rubber meets the road. On August 3rd, they actually stipulate through WhatsApp test, text messages the exact stipulations of the deal. On August 4th, $100,000 is wired into Owasco PC from CEFC Infrastructure. Mr. Chairman, I want to submit for the record a, a, a portion of the bank statement for the time period August 3rd of 2017 to August 31, 2017, stipulating $100,000 going from CEFC into the bank account of Hunter Biden through Owasco PC. With that objection, it's ordered. On August 8th, four days later, $5 million is Jeez. then transferred from the Northern International Capital account of $5 million to Hudson West III. Hudson West III is a bank account controlled by Hunter Biden wow. and Mr. Gon Wing, a.k.a. Kevin Dong, who is a CEFC yeah, associate. <laughs> that money comes from the Northern International Capital a bank account, a bank account that is tied to the CCP. CCP. Mr. Chairman, Weird. I want to submit for the record the bank statement demonstrating that transfer. Without objection, so ordered. Okay, moving on. On August 8th, the same time period, there is a wire transfer of $400,000 to Owasco PC from the, How the, the Hudson West the third bank account. That $400,000, Mr. Chairman, I have the transfer records in the bank accounts from the August time period. I want to submit that for the record. Without objection, to ordered. Now, here's where the fun stuff comes in, everybody, and I got a minute to do it, so we're going to get this done. On August 14th, there is $150,000 that is transferred from Owasco a PC, which is controlled by Hunter Biden, to Lion Hall Group, which is controlled by James Biden. I have the records here, Mr. Chairman, of the $150,000 that has gone to Lion Hall Group from Owasco PC. I want to submit that for the record. Without objection, it's ordered. On August 28th, and I believe we have a screenshot for everybody in the room. On August 28th, Mr. Chairman, we have the withdrawal ticket from Lion Hall Group that is signed by Sarah Biden, who is the wife of Jim Biden, for $50,000 to withdraw from Lion Watch. Hall Group. I want to submit that withdrawal receipt for the record. Without objection, it's ordered. Bingo. On September 3rd, Here we go. on August 28th, actually, Mr. Chairman, oh, we more. have the deposit reference into Sarah Jones Biden's account on the same day she withdrew it from Lion Hall. I want to submit Without that. Without objection, to ordered. Last document. Here we go. On September 3rd, 2007, from Sarah Biden's own personal Joseph. account, there is a check that is written to, to Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., the president of the United States today, for $40,000 signed loan repayment. A loan repayment, loan by the way, that Joe Biden's own personal accountant, Mr. Eric Schwerin, has no record for. Here we go. I want to submit that for the record, Mr. Chairman. Without objection, so ordered. To the members of the committee, it is clear that the source of this money came from CEFC, 
and that CFC is a company that is directly linked to the CCP and, and uh, actually the chairman of the CCP, the chairman of the Chinese Communist Party, Chairman Xi Jinping. With that, I yield. Boom. So that is damn, just is. like, bam. So, damn it. So AOC wanted proof. He That's just gave proof. it to you. So here's my question, though, and th I want to ask all you guys. So Careful tr what you tr for. Trump was impeached for a phone call that they thought they heard. No, there was no actual proof when they impeached him for the whole phone call for, for the Ukraine, Zelensky, whatever, right? Now that we have all this proof, it's black and white. How is, how is he not getting impeached? Is it because they don't control the House and the Senate? Yes. yes. Is that crazy? Does that, yes. Like, here's the proof. He's guilty. He was doing shady deals with his son with China, and nothing's going to happen. He's going to have to go to court, just Guys, like how if Trump there had been a red, that's a If there had been a red ripple, not a red wave, just a red ripple, there would be an impeachment. Unbelievable, though. There it's would be an impeachment. They would have the seats. No, no, not a red wave, just a red ripple. Like, do you, do you see why That's people have lost if, all hope in 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 the, the judicial system and this and Congress? And, like, what the hell are we even talking about? The, the Hunter Biden thing has just been so obvious from day one that something was not right there. First off, that he's selling art, that he's an artist. It's the easiest way to money launder, period, because it's subjective in how much it's worth. Mm -hmm. So if you think that someone in their right mind is paying $500,000 for a piece of shitty ass art that <laughs> Hunter Biden made in a day because it's they like his art and it has what? nothing to do with getting access. I, I got to return the art. I, 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 I yeah, thought yeah, this was going to double in value. Adam, that's, that's two of them. There's like crack cocaine on one of them. That's yeah. why I bought it. You're bad, dude. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> number one. But number two, then he works for Burisma. He works, everyone knows this already, but he works for Burisma, a Ukrainian energy company, when he's a crackhead with no expertise in Ukrainian mm. energy or anything else for 80, I think it's 80 grand a month. Jeez. And it's like, why the hell did he have that job? It has a little something to do with who his dad is. Mm -hmm. And do you remember that at the height of the craziness uh, before Trump was impeached, when when Don Trump Jr., remember it came out that he had lunch yeah. with a Russian yeah. on the Upper East Side. Yeah. Yeah. And people were going bananas, yeah. bananas, and nothing came of it. And it's like, the, yes, the double standard. But the thing is, nobody, it, there, we don't have a functioning enough system anymore to ex to, to for anything to happen mm -hmm. when the so we all see it we yep. all see it but they can't get it through the senate the con congress is screwed the courts are now i don't want to say the courts are corrupt but the courts are they're very, i'll say it for you they're very corrupt the courts are well no state courts for States sure are for sure state courts for sure although do you see that the new york state supreme court it's all black women now so that's very exciting. Great DI score. Yeah, that's no, the incredible incredible thing to do. Through diversity, equity, and inclusion, they got have, all they got black it. women, I don't which is try. statistically I don't impossible. want to be spoiler yeah. alert, but you know what's going to happen to Joe Biden? Absolutely nothing. No, of course. Exactly. That's not going to, I mean, what it's going to happen. I mean, do, but what we can go down from there and filter down what we've just saw. Number one, uh, Byron Donalds is an absolute beast. He's here in Florida. There's a reason that he's sort of risen up the ranks of the GOP because he's just a common sense dude. Forget about yeah. playing the uh, culture wars, black gay. This is just a, a genuine good dude. There's a reason that he's being considered for potential VP for Trump. That's A. Um, and you saw he just went fact, 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 fact. Proof, where you have proof. AOC out there just going feeling, feeling, feeling. Well, she's feeling. a bartender. I don't know who her boyfriend she's a bartender. is, but I would certainly prescribe her some vitamin D. I'll let you do the math on that. But the reality <laughs> is Hunter Biden is they're setting him up to be the fall guy. You know, he's the. Uh, whether it's the gun stuff, what's the tax evasion stuff, the crack cocaine, you know, now he's blow Casso out here painting paintings. So nothing's going to happen to Biden and Hunter's going to be the fall guy. We first learned about this guy, Tony Bobolinsky. Remember it was October of 2020 during the election, Hunter Biden, Tony Bobolinsky. I remember we had that. We did the debate in Dallas at this point. Everyone's like, who the fuck this is Bobolinsky? Just crazy. Four years later, he's still dealing with the exact same thing. Hey Adam, I just drew some concentric yes, skirt circles, yes. kind of scribbles. And I wrote it's what I think sick, of though. AOC. I'd, I'll sell this to you for 50 grand right now. <laughs> you have a deal, you. sir. I'm surprised you didn't charge a hundred grand. I, overpaid I can't, things. I can't read what I yeah. said. Wow. That's art. That's, uh, <laughs> that's art. You right. should auction, auction it. Tax the rich, tax the bitch. Auction yeah. it. We should auction it. By, by, by the way, way. by the way, way, meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, President Trump comes out in an interview with Sebastian Gorka. Rob, if you can have this ready, mm -hmm. and both clips, if we can go to it. So this is one of them. Go ahead and play this. Talking. Right. Hate Bibi Netanyahu. Why I actually do, think they hate Israel. Yes. I don't think they hate him. I think they hate Israel. When you see those Palestinian uh, marches. Even I, I'm amazed at how many people are in those marches. And guys like Schumer see that. 
And to him, it's votes. I think it's votes more than anything else, because he was always pro-Israel. He's very anti-Israel now. Any Jewish person that votes for Democrats uh, hates their religion. They hate everything about Israel, and they should be ashamed of themselves. Now, now go play the other clip. Go play the other clip, because there's two of them, Rob, I believe. Right? Go ahead. Now he's addressing it. Headed by the courts. President Trump, do you think Jewish people who vote Democrat hate religion? Do you think Jewish people who vote Democrat? I think that the Democrats have been very, very opposed to Jewish people. That's true. And to Israel. All you have to do is look at Senator Schumer. What he did with Israel is a disgrace. And I think Israel will probably not forget it very soon. It's a very sad situation. Do you think the 16th week of there you go. He's so right. thoughts on this. You, you right. agree with him? He's right. Look, I was in Israel last week when Schumer gave that speech. And, you know, being in Israel and I went to the kibbutzes that were attacked. I was right on the border with Gaza, which when you see how close this thing was to Gaza and that they had basically a, a, a just like a fence. You have a better fence at your house with some barbed wire. Egypt has three layers of fences that are way higher and everything else. Um, and then to see the utter devastation, one of the communities I was in, 900 people live there. Two people live there now. Jeez. Um, I went to the Nova Festival. It, it looks like a graveyard of 350 people, but it's it's a memorial now. Um, I talked to survivors. I talked to you know people in hostages' families. All, all of these things. But to be there during that, uh, well, that's yeah, that's that's the no no no. That's, that's the re, Egypt. That's border. the Egypt. Yeah, that's the yeah. Egypt border. Um, you can maybe find it on my Twitter. A picture of the bo- of the border that Israel had. Uh, with Gaza, which looks nothing like yeah, that, and they regret that's the that, rough and, they, and they relied way too much on technology and all that. But anyway, to to be there uh, and witnessing what happened, and I also saw the forty-seven minute video. You know, there's this video that they're not releasing publicly. It is you. You there are literally are not words to explain the things that I saw. I mean, beheading people with what you with what looks like a kitchen knife, and oh. sh- and watching the entire thing, the the worst, even worse, and then walking away with the head. I swear on my life. And, then, and even worse than that, the worst thing that I saw was you see a father of two young boys. I'm, not, I'm actually not even sure if I'm supposed to talk about this, but um, you see a father of two young boys, probably six and eight years old. The Hamas guys break into the house. The father runs with them, grabs them both, trying to get them into the bomb shelter. But the bomb shelter is a bomb shelter. It's not set up to be a, a, to, a defense if a terrorist breaks into your house. The guy calmly walks up and just throws a grenade into the bomb shelter. You see the dad's body basically Jeez. just explode and drop dead. Two little kids hysterical crying. Then there's video of them talking in the kitchen, hiding about what just happened to their dad. One of the kids' eyes is blown away. It turns out the kids actually did survive. But anyway, to be there, to watch that and see what's going on and be at Hostage Square with all these people and then have Schumer get up there where everybody, it doesn't matter what you think, Trump is totally right. It's not about, Bibi is just an avatar for Israel right now, right? The entire country's behind him, 100%. They know they have to win this war. As every single, almost every single person from the mm-hmm. flight attendant on El Al to anyone I met in Jerusalem said to me, we have to win this war, we have no choice. There's no choice. They win this war or the state does not exist. And by the way, there's a bigger war brewing on the north because Hezbollah is way stronger than Hamas and they've got something like 100,000 rockets facing them. So there's there's a, a cataclysmic series of events on the horizon here. Uh, but to be there while, sh- while Schumer, and, and the thing is, Schumer, it's the most cynical thing you can do. What Schumer has realized, and I think what the Democrats have realized, is they don't need the Jews anymore, basically. And for Schumer as a Jew, I think there's a particular version of kind of hell in that. But what they've realized is they're winning California no matter what. They're winning New York no matter what, despite our earlier segment. And they're losing Florida no matter what. That's pretty much the entire Jewish vote. So now they suddenly see 50,000 Muslims in Dearborn, Michigan as important. And Biden has dementia and no, he's not running the show. And Schumer did like, to me, it's the most cynical, awful thing you can, you can possibly do right now. And to be there during it was, was what is wild. that? What is that? What, what do you mean? Schumer. What do you say? Oh, no, no. It's, in essence, I mean, he completely threw Israel under the bus. They're fighting an unbelievably mm-hmm. just war. You know, if you, if you uh, compare it in numbers, imagine if 10,000 Americans were killed and several other thousand were kidnapped. And then right when they get to the end, because Rafa now is the end. This is the mm-hmm. end. The hostages are there. Who knows if any of them are alive at this point? And if they are alive, just wait till they get them out and they look like Holocaust survivors, what the <laughs> emotional reaction to that is going to be. But they're right at the end and right at the end, you basically call to to depose a democratically elected leader. This has nothing to do with whether you like Bibi or not or what your feelings on his politics are or anything else. 
he's a rightfully elected leader of an ally. And even if they weren't an ally, they're a Democrat, uh, uh, a democratically elected government. And to basically call for them to be deposed, I thought we're not for nation building. Are the Democrats suddenly for nation building? Uh, but to do it to a country that's in the midst of an existential war is is completely beyond the pale. I mean, Schumer, it's un, he's trading. He basically wants to get beheaded a day later. That's what he's trying to do. <laughs> he's see, trying to be, bury his head in the sand so they behead him a little bit lower on the... You see Bibi's response. He's just said, look, uh, as a democratic country ally of the U.S., whatever you feel... Don't call for elections, because that's basically what they're calling for, elections for Bibi. Now, we all know what happened in Israel prior to October 7th. It was very contentious. The Supreme Court, yeah. what they were stacking the court, just in, in, the, in the context of America, some people don't know how it works in the Knesset and in Israeli politics. You have the left wing, you have the right wing. It's also a parliamentary system, right? So Bibi is on the right. He's basically the Donald Trump yeah. of Israel. But in order to basically put together a coalition, he had to align himself with the far right extremists, the orthodox community, the religious. But the people on the left, here's the biggest thing. The people on the left, the people that were killed at the Nova Festival, the people that were killed in the kibbutzes, those were the leftists. They were all lefties. Those were they the peaceful people. Those are the people that are screaming from the rooftops. We have to coexist. We have to help our Palestinian brethren. Those are the people that were massacred. By the way. So that, now there's uniformity in Israel. They're like, they're killing the people calling for peace. So those people are now completely silenced. And they're just like, look, end these guys. Yeah, the, the left there, that the peacenik left is over. And it should yes. be over. I, frankly, I never believed in it, but it should be over. The Palestinians don't want a state. They want to make sure that there's no Israeli state. That that really the river is to what the sea that, that is. Yeah. Israelis are gone. Yeah. So. Yeah. That that's one part of it, but watch. But the left there has largely disappeared because the people that live down south, as you point out, they wanted a lot of the people that broke in on October seventh. They worked at those kibbutzes. They'd come in every single they, day and work and make the, money. One of the things that they did, we saw this there. They would put numbers on the houses so that the Hamas mm -hmm. guys knew how many people they would were supposed to kill in each house because they had workers there that work with them. So that thing has collapsed. But for Schumer, it, and by the way, this has nothing. To, I, I happen to be a supporter of Israel, obviously. But if Schumer did this or if a Democrat leader did this to any democratically elected mm -hmm. government, it would be wrong. We wouldn't want an ally saying, look, Joe Biden has dementia. Everyone knows it. Our policies are horrible. Imagine if France was like, you know what? It's time for if the French prime minister got up there and was like, it's time for Joe Biden to go yeah. in the American. We would all be like, He's got fuck off, motherfucker. Right yeah. 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 And, and, and take care of his husband. But yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are, you on, are you on board that 100, one? Are you on I'm board with that him. one? And by the way, nothing wrong with that. But the way mm -hmm. they're putting it, like since 15 years old, that was your teacher. That's and called then, pedophilia. Anyways, I don't want to go yeah. through it. Go ahead. But, uh, but so, and, but, so Dave, I, I have two things. But so yeah. so when you said about, about the Jewish people, basically, they're, are they abandoning like full whole what he's doing? What How they're treating, you know, with, with Schumer treating this? Because basically, it's for votes he's yeah. literally turning his back as a jew saying the hell with everybody he wants those votes same with the the left again the schumers illegals open the border they're just that hungry for power have they lost the jewish that 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 block for good is that I, it i think they are making it's a horrifically cynical political calculation to just look at the numbers Mo, if you t i don't know what percentage maybe we can figure it out uh, jews live in new york cali and florida and if you know the results of those elections already you just don't need them anymore it's as simple as that it's by the way it's why the democrats always uh, win the black vote and then never do anything for blacks. Mm. It's like, you'd, oh, we, we'll get these people to vote for us and we don't have to do anything for them. This is pretty freaking spectacular. So it's a similar version yeah. to that. So Schumer, Schumer also, you have to remember, this guy's been in politics. It's, it's not as long as Biden, but he's, he's, a, he's a piece of the machine that has existed for so long yeah. that he's just running cover to maintain his power as much as he can. That's, I don't even think that takes great analysis to figure out. Yeah. And, and when he's doing that, if he has to throw his own people under the bus, and by the way, this is a guy who's been pretty good on Israel as a Democrat. I mean, he was against the Iran deal, which I think was the right position, but it's it's a horribly cynical thing, and I hope the guy. I hope for the rest of his life, every time he steps foot in a synagogue, he's booed out. Good. Okay, watch this year. Sixteen percent of Jews comp uh, comprise approximately of New York City's population, making the Jewish community the largest in the world. Outside of Israel, as of 2020, just over 1.3 million Jews lived in the five boroughs of New York City. Over 1.92912 Jews lived in New York, Newark, Jersey City overall. So again, if these guys got fully pushed away. 
and they have influence. Uh, I, I, I don't know where we were at. We were in the Bahamas. I don't know where we were at. There's like 100 Jews from New York who were in Bahamas, and I'm there with the family, Moralty, kids, you know, we're just having a good time. And one by one by one, they're all coming and we're talking to them, right? Vinny, did, weren't you with us? Or, I, no, mine was at the airport oh, with like okay, 30. Yeah. The 30 and, and, and they're all like, yeah, let me tell you, we're from this and we're from that. And then, then the wife comes and this person comes and that person comes. I'm like, so where are you guys politically? Because, you know, most of you guys are this. Well, listen, um, I'm, uh, I'm not going to vote for Trump, the wife. And it's like, well, I'm, I'm trying to figure out my wife. There's about 100 <laughs> of them. And they were all Trump guys. Yeah. yeah. Okay. On this trip. So. If, if then you do this and they have influence and they're making money and they're doers, imagine what they can flip in state like New York. By the way, you, did you, you know, do you know my blowjob theory, my blowjob political what? theory? Have I you told it to Rudy Giuliani, I, I did, believe. Uh, so, yeah. I, my blowjob theory is that m most men, sane men have moved are okay with Trump. Like they get, they get, they can see through all the bullshit and everything else. Women, mostly middle-class women or upper middle-class educated women still have just the aversion to Trump, the way he mm -hmm. speaks, grab him by the pussy and all yeah. that. And at the end of the day, guys like getting a blowjob. And if you think that you are not going to get blowjobs anymore because you're supporting Trump, then a lot of these guys are going to be quiet. <laughs> oh, wow. However, however, I do think in light of what's happened over the last couple of months, that's shifting a little bit. But but I actually think that's a pretty legit theory. Very I, interesting I like theory. Unless uh, anyone here wants to come out against yeah. blowjobs. <laughs> by, by the way, we'll be speaking about that later on SauceCast. <laughs> but to, to, to what Tom was saying about the red wave and what PBD is talking about, New York could go for Trump or the blacks for Trump or seeing Latinos break for Trump. I think we're going to see an overwhelming majority of Jewish people being like, yeah, I'm done with the Democratic Party. Good. We saw yeah. the, the, the Michael Rappaport right here. It was, Big dick Donald Trump. Yeah. I said, I want to make you a bet, buddy. I think you're actually going to end up voting for Trump. Well, what do you mean? Because I'm like, you're a dude. You like blowjobs. Okay. Okay, so here you go right there. So I think there's going to be some sort of red wave coming from blue Israel over to the Democratic, uh, from the Democratic Party to Trump, and I think he's going to do that. So we'll see what happens with that. Words talk number scream, and as much as the Democrat pollsters look, oh, look, we're four points closer in Texas, they need to look over their shoulder and look at what's happening in New York, because those numbers are real. Mm -hmm. Is Trump going to win New York? I don't think he's going to win New York, but it's going to be closer than Ever, and I think it's going to scare the hell out of them. The, and the biggest because thing. Because if New York's close, Pennsylvania is not New York because you have so much of that Allegheny area. Uh, we'll, we'll cover this in due time, but there, there are things in happening. Your in your numbers, what is it? Uh, words, words talk, talk, numbers scream. Or numbers scream. I mean, if you want to ask, like, why is Schumer doing this? Why is Bernie doing this? It really has to do with one thing, and that's Gen Z. Overwhelmingly, 35 plus Americans, age 35 plus, overwhelmingly support Israel as a democracy, as an ally. It's the TikTok generation. We can go down the rabbit hole, the bite dance, TikTok and CCP that is indoctrinating the youth to every single thing that's happening here. They're like, why would you side with an ally, America, Israel? No, side with Osama bin Laden and the terrorists. Go for it. And are, that's what happens to you, kids. The only qualification I would make on that is Bernie's been pretty consistent on his awful Israel stance forever. Mm -hmm. And he should go to Gaza. Go to Gaza, Bernie. Yeah. You know, the other thing in the 47-minute video is they never say free Palestine. There's, they're yelling religious slogans the entire time, and they're talking about kill the Jew, kill that Jew. A guy calls yep. on WhatsApp, calls his mom to talk about how many Jews he's killed. Yep. So Bernie, they'll still kill you, Bernie. Chuck, they're still going to kill you, Chuck, and they will kill everybody that you know. Send Amy Schumer there and see what they do to her, you know, their cousin. Who from the left has gone to Gaza? Schumer what, gone, gone to Gaza? Gone over there, right? like gone to... <laughs> Israel. Well, well to no the one's going to Gaza right now. I mean, they're not... But what they're saying, if you're saying it's going to be safe for them, let's defend oh, them. Oh, but no, send them. I yeah, what I'm yeah, saying yeah. is, why don't you go? Yeah, go hang out. Go, go hang out and spend a little bit more time talking to I them. I tweeted. If you care I'll, so much about I'll, it, go there. I'll donate $100,000 to Schumer's next campaign if he walks into Gaza. Right. There you go. Walk so, into Gaza, by the way, uh, uh, did, you, did you watch the interview Candace did recently with... Um, uh, rabbi? Uh, uh, the uh, the r rabbi, I think, which uh, rabbi, well, you have a clip of it? Two rabbis. There's rabbi, yeah, I'm Shmuley talking Botech, about, no, no it was Rabbi Shmuley. Barkley. No, Barkley. It was Rabbi Barkley. 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 Can you play Not this Charles clip? Barkley, but Can you this play this? Go on and play this clip, Rob. And just so the reference, the backstory is that uh, the, this rabbi is accusing Candace Owens of ca calling Rabbi Shmuley Boteach's daughter a hag. So that's mm -hmm. the setup. Right. A hag, which, okay. 
How dare you go into the misogynistic, oh, sorry, excuse me, the, the, the anti-Semitic trope of his hag daughter, something used throughout the late 18th and, and early uh, through the early 20th century. Sorry, sorry, hag is now anti-Semitic? So that is a term of his hag daughter that goes back into the witches of, of, of Eastern Europe. Why did you have to call her a hag daughter? Just Tell to be that. clear, because she's a witch. I think she's a witch. That's not because she's right, Jewish. Right, I, would call, right I would call oh, someone wait, a hag of any again. color. I think she's a witch, wait, what wait, they have wait, done wait, over the wait. last two years. I believe his daughter is a hag. I said that because that's what I believe. You may disagree okay, with me on that, on but to, to say that that's anti-Semitic that. is ridiculous. I would call any person okay. a hag. Candace? Well, here's my thing. and I, I, I watched this entire thing. It was really, really difficult because, uh, mind you, I, I don't think Candace Owens hates Jewish people, but to, to like, for instance, if I called Adam just off the cuff, I'm like, you freaking, you old ass hag. For somebody to have to so go, gross. yeah, for somebody to have to go all the way back to whatever century that he's talking about and be like, what you're saying is anti-Semitic. It's like, I felt, this is me personally, Dave, like he was searching for something because I don't know if you guys know uh, Rabbi Shmuley, I don't know how it is in the Jewish community. The guy's a rabbi, which is technically, you know, holy. She's like, he sells butt plugs and dildos in a business with his daughter. Candace thinks it's not good. In my opinion as well, I don't think anybody in the religious sect should be in business with their daughter of all people selling sex toys. That's the angle she took to say that it's anti-Semitic and that she doesn't hit like Jewish people. I think it's just reaching and looking for something to just label her, which I think is dangerous because like she's not. If you saw, did you see this thing, Adam? Did you see the, 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 the interview? With yes, the, I did. The rabbi. And do I'll you think when you want? Do you, I'm saying, do you think uh, Candace Owens saying that Rabbi Shmuley, who he and his daughter are, have been attacking Candace for over two years, that her calling the daughter a hag in her mind, she's like, yeah, this is anti-Semitic. Let me go for that. Oh, well, I'm going to let Dave respond as well, but I'll just say, look, I've been called and shout out to the chat and all our friends out there. I've been called every name in the book for Jew, for this, for that. It is what it is. I believe in free speech. Say all you want. Inciting violence. Sorry, guys. I don't play that game, nor should we. Uh, you know, th th I don't know this guy or the rabbi, but I did do. I watched the interview there. They have. She said her words. I believe like. What, any Orthodox person, whether you're Jewish, whether you're Christian, whether you're Mormon, whether you're Muslim, they have kids. They believe in having lots of kids. Of course. So yeah, I, I, it's fun to say butt plugs and dildos. No, they they have oils and lotions and potions to help keep the spark alive in your relationship. Cool. I don't really care. They did an interview with your old friend Jenk Weger and Rabbi Shmuley, and <laughs> they did friend. that. Right. And. <laughs> And look, and he's like, yeah, I don't really give a shit about this. The reality is, let's get to the actual point here. Whether his daughter owns some sort of sexual they orientation, own it. They what, own it. whatever it is, I don't care. That yeah. to me is so the most irrelevant thing here. It's uh, the moral equivalency of what Israel defending itself versus terrorism. That to me is what. But I'm she, but but, on. but 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 going to this though, what her comments to, about Shmuley has. Nothing to do with anti-Semitism. Yeah, I think it's just her. By the way, Candace is the one that went to Jerusalem when they opened the embassy. She's not anti-Jewish. The fact that that guy could take that hag comment and go back to like, that's like me sneezing right now and Adam going, hachoo. And you go, oh, you said Jew. That's anti-Semitic. You did. You did. Yeah, I'll, I'll say last thing and then I'm going to let yeah. Dave do his thing. Uh, what I will say this, you know, there's people that overreach. And that uh, on all sides, but especially on the Jewish side of things I'm talking about right now, guys, my friends, not every criticism of Israel or Jews is anti semitic I'm happy you said that. I'm sorry. But a lot of it is. Yeah, no, there's a lot. But, <laughs> a lot of but it this is. is reaching for something that's I not agree. there. I don't even, uh, the, the hag thing going to the witches. Did you even know that? You're no, Jewish. No, but that that's where you get reaching. I but, called my grandmother an old but, hag. I didn't know it was anti semitic Last point, <laughs> uh, you know, after the Holocaust, which people are still alive you have, from the you've Holocaust. You've had seven last points. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Dave? <laughs> well, that Jews are paranoid, and that's what's going on. P yeah. Putting aside the specifics of that clip for a second, Second, um, I know it would be extremely good for the internet and for the warfare yeah. that we're all involved in for me to uh, go after Candace right now. But let me just say that uh, Candace and I were very good friends for a long time. I was at her wedding. She was at my house only a year and a half ago helping us pick out strollers for our kids who weren't even born yet. 
Um, I, in large part, I kind of discovered her when she was known as Red Pill Black on YouTube, mm. and I brought her on my show. We did a sign called YouTube Week where we take little YouTubers. When I sat down with her in my house, I didn't—I actually didn't know her name until 20 seconds before we started. I said, "I think you're Red Pill Black, but w what's your real name?" Uh, we ended, she ended up staying at my house for like 10 hours that night. We've had her and her husband over for dinner many, many times. So in this case, um, I don't think that I, I'm just not in the place anymore where I want to be involved in the, the firestorm of burn everything down, uh, as it, as it relates to her and everything else. I, I would say just on, on Israel specifically, what I've heard her say, she seems largely confused about a bunch of issues and I hope that she will talk to people who know a little bit more about some of this stuff than she is. You know, there was a video where she was talking about the Muslim quarter in the old city of Jerusalem, the implication being that, Jew, that Israel keeps all of the Muslims in one quarter. And it's like the Muslim quarter, which has existed from the British Empire to the Ottoman Empire, mm -hmm. to we can go back and back to the old temple in Jerusalem. Uh, Israel, which there is no apartheid, where 20% of the population are Israeli Arabs, most of whom are Muslim, uh, and are, some of whom are on the Supreme Court and the rest of it. I think she's a little confused about some of the things, but I think, uh, well, I hope you heard the overriding part, which is that I don't want to make it personal with her. I don't really consider us friends anymore, um, but that's just like the nature of the reality of the thing that we're all in. You know what do you I mean? think about the dynamics of her and Ben at Daily Wire, where, you know, Ben made those comments at that one event and it was recorded and it went to the public and, you know, yeah. I don't agree with this. And obviously tensions were high. What, what are your thoughts about that dynamic? I think there's there's many layers to this. Let, let's just remove the Israel layer for a okay. second. There, there's a pure business layer to it, which is that Candace has a contract with Daily Wire. Mm -hmm. I know nothing. I truly know nothing about the nature of the contract or the, how long it lasts or how much it's for or anything else. But it seems fairly obvious to me she wants to leave the Daily Wire. And I would say there's a little bit of the Tucker thing here, too, which Tucker is building a network. He now is the Tucker Carlson network. He's gone after Ben, I would say, in a fairly unfair way. Um, repeatedly going after Ben's motives, saying he doesn't love America, things like that. Who? Tucker. Tucker, right. yeah. yeah. Ben right. has repeatedly, he did it on my show, he's done it on his show, said, I'll be happy to sit down with you. I've offered to moderate it, but you could moderate it. They don't even need a moderator. I think it would be a good conversation to have. You can have difference of opinion on, say, foreign policy or, or any political issue without going after someone's motives or saying they don't love America, that sort of thing. But... At a business level, Tucker now has a network that is in competition. He's building a network now that is in competition with the Daily Wire. So it would be pretty great to take out Ben Shapiro. That's just reality. You think right? that's what it is? I, I think that there is an element of that. I'm removing just the specifics around Israel or politics for a second and saying that there, and I think Candace to her own, uh, whether she wants to join Tucker or do something else after, start the the Candace Owens network, whatever it might be. I think there are realities outside of just like the political fights. And that's why in this case, it actually, for me, it has more to do with that. I, we were friends for a while. I'm trying to honor and, and respect that. We were, we were quite good friends, not, you know? Um, and I, I think she sees an opportunity here and she's going. For why, why would, why would Tucker see Ben as, Ben as competition though? Because if you're building, if you're building a, a right leaning network, Daily right. Wire, Daily Wire is number one, right? So you go for number one. You're, you're trying to take out number one. I, I can't say that for sure. And again, this is something I've said on my show. I would gladly sit with both of them and discuss it. Uh, I've had both of them on my show, obviously repeatedly. Uh, but I think there is some reality there. If Tucker's going, well, what is the new right? What is the future you of the right? You think Tucker's just doing that to Ben because Not of... just, not just. I think there are legit political right. differences. But but think about it. If you're going, oh, this guy's got the online network. That's the, the right online network. And now I'm trying to build a network. It would be pretty damn good if I could irreparably wound him. That That's just reality. That, that You would only do that if a guy is ahead of you. Do you put Ben ahead of Tucker? Oh, well, in terms of business, absolutely. Well, yes, term, yes, I do. Actually, since Tucker has, yeah, I think. Wait, I, let, let, me, let me get to, I want to ask this very important for you. For, yeah. for, for me, I want to hear what you're going to say. So you're yeah. saying to me, post Tucker leaving Fox and even previous to Tucker yeah. leaving Fox, who had more influence in America, Tucker amongst conservatives or Ben? Previ before leaving Fox, I would say it was pretty close to call. 
pretty close to call. Not in our world, not in the online world. I get it. I get it. In the online world, it's all about the online people. But Tucker had a huge amount of influence when he was on Fox. It's a little hard to say how much his influence is now. Um, that's not a shot at Tucker, by the way. I, get, I see you on X, he has a gajillion views on everything. We don't know exactly how they're quantifying views if you just skip past it and all that. I, I, no, I know you take the counter on this. I'm, I'm not even saying that. I'm not, no, I'm not taking a counter. I, 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 I like both guys. I, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a... Uh, no, no, no. In terms of influence post-Fox, right? You would say his influence is, is way greater post-Fox, right? Yeah, no. There, there's two different things. There's the, the, the let's isolate concerns. The, the isolate concerns of, you know, uh, Ben... The the CEO hat, the Israel hat, the conservative hat, he put Israel 1, conservative 2, Daily Wire 3. That's just when he did that in that event, when he called that Candace, he went Israel, conservative, a uh, 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 Jewish audience. Then he went CEO, Candace, part well, of his not, network. He's not the CEO, and he hasn't been the CEO. Co-founder. At, at least co-founder. The, but, yeah. but even your, when people think about Daily Wire, they don't think about Jeremy Boring. They right. think about Ben Shapiro. Right. Nobody, we know Jeremy's the operator. We had him on. We had a very good conversation yeah. with him. But you think Ben. You don't think, right. you know. The optics of it, yeah. I ben. guarantee you, yeah. if we did a poll right now and you ask who is the who CEO, <laughs> they would say Ben Shapiro yeah. when I ask you the question. Okay. Right. So you have a big responsibility because a big part of Daily Wire's success is Ben. Ben yeah. is a behemoth of an influence. But in, in, in regards purely to Tucker versus Ben, to me, you think Tucker doesn't have the kind of influence in the last since he left Fox as Ben does? No, no, no. That's not exactly what I said. I think it's hard to quantify I don't what think Tucker's it is. influence I, is. Can you put up Chartable? Pull up Chartable. I don't think it is because, I, by the way, when you go to Twitter, I agree yeah. with you because some of the stuff on Twitter, you're like, 400 million views. Well, it's not really fun. Then right. on YouTube, there's 50 million. There are 350 million. million Americans. They're telling to us things. To yeah. I can you go yeah. up and type in Tucker? Just type in Tucker in yeah. that if you can. And does Tucker's uh, 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 show come on? It should come on. You know what? Just type in Joe Rogan. Type in Joe Rogan. And right there, Joe Rogan Experience. And if you can go to Apple, uh, go to Spotify Podcast, Top America Podcast. Sp just click on the first one. There you go. Number one is Rogan. Two is, I don't even know. So Tucker murder, three is. Yeah, ghost, right. crime. Tucker's crime. three. Now go to Apple. And by the way, and then keep going down. Huberman, you know, Balin, you got Mel, you got Call Her Daddy. You got all these guys that you're going, right? Yeah. This is you, Spotify? Is that this what we're is, looking at? Right? But, but, yeah. I'll go to Apple as well. Lex, yeah. you got all these guys, right? You don't see. Hey, you don't I see, know that hey, guy. But no, yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is you don't see. There's Candace. There's Jordan. Okay, so now yeah. go back on Chartable. And, and go to Apple, okay? And on any given day, Joe's always number one on like a golf score. But obviously, yeah. you know, yeah, Apple yeah. has different kind of algorithms. Keep going lower, keep going lower, keep going lower. You know, you got Huberman. Ben is there, yeah. 18. Go a little lower, a little lower, a little lower. Uh, 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 on the low, okay, on the Apple side, keep going lower. Does, does Tucker even put his stuff on Apple? I'm, well, but, there he is. Yeah, there, there it is. Click so, on so that. Click you're... on that. Click on that real quick. Okay, so now we see the ranking there. Zoom in a little bit. So, okay, so on Apple, he's 65. On Spotify, he's three, okay? So to the Spotify talent, he's way ahead. To the Apple podcast, uh, Ben is way ahead. To the Twitter views, I would say uh, Tucker's way, way ahead on the Twitter views, which Twitter is now getting God knows how many people that are logging on on a daily basis. And I would say even on YouTube, if you go compare data. So I'm asking this because I, I, uh, I wonder if a part of Candace's dealing with Tucker. So are you insinuating, are you, are you speculating that maybe, t maybe Candace is trying to leave to want to go join Tucker? I think it's definitely okay, So that's possible. what you're thinking. Or, or to start okay. her own network. Okay. But I think what, I got you, it. what you just illustrated there in that Tucker was way down below Ben on one of them and Apple. above on the other. Yeah. And also the Daily Wire has a massive subscription game. I don't think Tucker has a subscription no, game. No, he yet. does not. So mm -hmm. think about it. The Daily Wire is generating, I don't know what their rev is, maybe, I don't even know if it's public, but they're generating a huge amount on that side. They they're they're real out. business. Yeah, they're, no, they're, no. they're a unicorn. I'm not uh, undermining the business value. I'm talking pure influence pound for pound Tucker versus Ben. Right. So all I'm saying is it's a little hard to quantify. I think we're basically, we're basically saying they're roughly yeah. in the same world, right? Like you're not giving me anything <sighs> empirical here that's showing me that Tucker's blown up. They're basically in the same world. But if you're Tucker and let's say you're 65 that you just showed us on Apple and Ben was what, 18? 
Well, in the world that they live in, a lot of those people were doing culture podcasts and fashion podcasts. The guy you want to go after is eight, number eighteen. It's not the it's not the girl doing. I'm trying that. to really, I'm trying to really, in my mind, wrap that around. You know, to see if that's if what you took out the Daily Wire. Those subscribers got to go somewhere. I don't think, but I don't think Tucker's playing that game. You see, for me, I asked three I don't questions. Know. I don't know. I asked three questions, and I've been asking it for a while. Does Tucker want to be Roger Ailes or Rupert Murdoch? I don't think so. Does Tucker want to be, uh, uh, you know, Rush Limbaugh and, you know, just stay in this? And that's he wants to have the biggest influence politically on the conservative side? Maybe. Does Tucker want to be Churchill to go from a ch- journalist to eventually become a president? Maybe. I don't think Tucker's goal is to be a billionaire. I quite frankly don't think he gives a shit about being a billionaire. I think he loves his life. On the other side with Ben, I think Ben is also a crusade guy. And his loyalty is going to be to his community uh, as a, a Jew himself. He's going to be supportive of that. But I think since January, since October 6th or 7th, October 7th event that took place, he has proven, hey, zero compromise here. This is where I stand. And in some you know areas, it's hurt him numbers wise. In some, it's hurt him. Whereas I think Tucker is willing to criticize his own side and the other side. And that's where Tucker has been able to stay a little bit more fluid and gain a little bit from all sides versus Ben isolated himself a little sure, bit. Well, I may what, be wrong. Well, what what would you have liked to hear from Ben that you haven't heard when it comes to this? No, there's nothing about here. I'm Armenian and I'm Assyrian. Guess what? I'm going to be pro-Armenia, pro-Assyrian. Yeah. But I'm also going to give my... But by the way, there's a video. Somebody well, made a video on Instagram or Twitter and a Syrian guy told well, Patrick, I don't like what he said about Assyrians. I, that's, that's my brand. My brand isn't that I'm just going to sit there and not be critical of... Even uh, my own mistakes, things I've done in the past, things our community's done. Amer- I'm, I'm going to be openly talking about it. Our brand isn't to be 100% blinded to whatever. I think when you do that, but, y- it's- but, but Candace works at the Daily Wire, so mm-hmm. she says whatever she wants. So that so Ben, ben again, Ben is not the CEO, but she's expressing whatever she wants, and then he uh, he's also he's a pundit, right? So he's allowed to. It's different. I think it's different. Mm, I, I'm not I, I think it's different. I think the only reason it's different is, you know, uh, coming from a perspective of somebody that you brought over to you, okay, that, uh, uh, you know, your face, the face, and then how you protect somebody on that side is a different story. And, and, you know, that was, but are you saying he shouldn't criticize her if he thinks she's wrong about something the same way that she will criticize Candace goes after everybody that she disagrees Mm -hmm. with? Yeah, no, I'm not saying he, he he shouldn't criticize her. Uh, I think what happened post October 7th was in, in some ways good in some ways bad, not as an event folks. So don't put the good as in, it was good for what happened to the people. Zero. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It immediately filtered out people's positions and where they were at, where what was tolerable and what was not tolerable. Can we question some of those? Like, for example, I think we had, I don't know who we had on the podcast when the first time uh, when this event happened, I'm like, how do you not know we had, uh, that the Mossad, Tim Kath, the, how do you not, Tim Pulia, how do you not know that this was going to be Netanyahu? You mean to tell me you have that good of a intelligence, the best intelligence in the world you guys claim for the longest time, Mossad, that God knows how great you got, but you didn't know what happened? Where you no, know, you can't question that right now. Okay, John that, Kirby oh, said that. Charles, that, yeah, that was John, also, Charlie Kirk. John Kirby said now is Char- not the time. Oh, Charlie Kirk. That was yeah. on Charlie Kirk. Right. Yeah. No, no, it was, yeah. John, it was Charlie yeah. Kirk because yeah. we was yeah. at that time, and he was yeah. like all over the place. Like, so was there a stand down stuff. order? How do we know that's that a stand down thing. order? I think for me, it's the only thing where it's like, okay, cool. So that's where they are. That's where he is. That's where she is. That's where they are. That's where he is. Perfect. What a great way to identify exactly where everybody's at after an event. That's all I'm saying. The event did that, but for me. I don't know if Tucker, you know, like, do I think Rogan's going after anybody? No. Rogan's number one in 94 countries. <laughs> Joe. Number one in 94. Who is Joe going to go after? No one. You know what chilling. a Joe no, does? Isn't that making my point? Joe has no need to go after That's why Bunny. Tucker doesn't need to. So mm-hmm. to me. But I'm not totally, sh- but, but he is going after Ben. I, no, I think Tucker's going after ideas. And, and by the way, re- I mean, please, to, please to keep say, this in mind. To say you have ben, to know this. To say that Ben is anti-American, you guys can no, find I didn't me say that. that. I didn't, no, 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 I didn't no that's say. what he said. That's what he said. That, yeah. That's not what I'm saying. That, he can yeah. say that. That's yeah. his position. I'm not taking yeah. that position. No, no, I understand. But that. position I'm taking here is, and keep this in mind, I have never spoken to Tucker. I've never shook his hands. 
I've never been at an event. We spoke at the same event, but I left. Yeah. He came. So we've I've ne- done all those things with him. I like him. Yeah. I, yeah so I'm no, not even, all I'm yeah. saying. So th- this is not. And I've spent more time with Ben. Yeah. Ben has been on my show. I've been on Ben's show. By the way, the experience has been great. I don't have an issue with the guy. You know, Ben is, you know, when he's so focused, even when we were going before the interview, he was on his phone for 20 minutes. He's yeah. not really one that's going to be talking too yeah. much. He just may have focused about it. But this isn't about one side or the other. This is about the market was able to identify who is who in this conservative base. And I think they're all relevant. I think they're all necessary. But I think the lead dog, there's no question about it. The lead dog in this space amongst the Bens, the, you know, uh, all the the Tuckers, the the Jordans, all these guys. It's Tucker. I'm see. I'm not so sure of that because yeah. a Ben has a company that, as you just said, is a unicorn. As an influencer, not as a business yeah. owner, as an influencer, as an influencer, yeah. meaning like, like for example, Ben also has financially Jordan on the Daily Wire. Financially, yeah. you could say, you know, Dave Portnoy is like, you know, I'm not, ta- but I'm not talking about money and business and equity. Mm. I'm talking purely influence. When it comes down to this, I think it's Tucker one. I think then it's everybody else. And I yeah. think Ben is definitely at two or three spot in that camp. I, I don't know that we can fully quantify that. I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong, by the way. I don't know that we can fully quantify it, but clearly there's a gray area here that, that you might be right. However, I, can I change it for you? You sure. know who's, to, in my opinion, who's, you know who's the number one most influential Jewish voice ever since October 7th worldwide? Uh, John Stewart. Sosnick? <laughs> oh, God. I, I hope it's not Wait, John Stewart. John, out of John everybody? Stewart out of Chuck everybody. Chuck John Stewart I'm going to tell Chuck you Stewart what I'm going like to say. Jesus. Number one, most Jewish. amongst the Jewish community, you can put Netanyahu in there, Stewart in there, Shapiro, and you can throw everybody in there. You know who I think is number one? Who? Oh. I think Ben's number one. Ben, ben Shapiro. Shapiro. Yeah, I think Ben's oh, number oh, one. Yeah. I, I don't okay. even... But I, I thought but, you were going to pull a trick out of your yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. But what I'm saying yeah. to you is, I think during, after yeah. October 7th... It was him every day. He is bigger than Netanyahu, is what I I'm trying so to say. I think so, too. To me, his voice for that community carries more weight than anybody else. That's all I'm saying. Can I ask you guys and, a yeah. policy question yeah. here? Because... I actually think you're both you're both right in a certain context. I think it's not even question as far as influence uh, and notoriety. It's Tucker. It's not even a question from a business side of things. What he's put together at the Daily Wire. If you, most people don't know Jeremy Boring's name, they think it's Ben and the super team he's put together with Peterson and Walsh and Candace. The third thing that I want to focus on is the policy, though, because this comes down to more policy. Ben, I think, is staying more true to what the Republican Party has meant in the past, whereas Tucker has sort of adopted the MAGA, even though he talks so much trash about Trump, he's sort of adapted sort of the new MAGA policy perspective. And the question of, and this is what I want to get your opinion on, the isolationist perspective versus the interventionist perspective. It's clearly that Tucker has now aligned himself with the non-interventionist camp, the isolationist camp. Candace has basically come under that as well, where the Republican Party used to stand for free trade, peace through strength, you know, taking out our enemies we have to. Now it's no foreign wars, no funding of wars, uh, no free trade. How much of this is a straight up policy debate about intervention? Well, I would hope that most of it is. My guess is that that's actually not true, but my hope would be that most of it is. As for intervention or not intervention or that kind of thing, uh, what's interesting is Ben, uh, Ben has pointed this out repeatedly because tr- Tucker has implied, and again, I'm not sitting here as a lawyer for Ben, but Tucker has implied repeatedly that Ben has called for troops on the ground over there and everything else. I was just in Israel. There was not one Israeli, literally not one. I don't think you could Google all day long. I don't think you can find one influential Israeli that has called for troops on the ground. They want the ability to finish a war themselves and they do mm-hmm. need some help with weapons. But the last thing that they want are American troops there because that will not go well for America. It will not go well for them. It won't go there, go well for the region. Um, most people, po- most people post boomer are more isolation in general. We realize that world policing isn't working. Nation building clearly isn't working. My personal belief is that we should have allies who we have a common cause with and we believe in democracy with and have similar values and things of that nature. And Israel, certainly in that part of the world, is obviously that. Um, but that's a that's like a healthy debate to have. That's why, again, 
I think when Tucker has said, well, Ben is anti-American or the implication that he wants his children to die, you can find the clip if you want. Right. Uh, that's I've where I think he's gone a little bit overboard. He said, I have military age children. They're going to send my kids yeah, to war. But, but Tuck, I've Tucker, ne- none of your kids are going to war. Buddy. Right, right. And I think that's where it's gotten a little bit sloppy, where perhaps there's a, a little more of a business angling to it than just uh, than just policy. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know if uh, uh, I don't know what Tucker's going to be doing with TCN. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if the. Um, I don't know either. But yeah. he's calling it a network. It's yeah. on the right. Yeah. I mean, it's. I, I. I. Again, I don't know what that brand is going to be, and has I don't know what they're going to be. Has he built, signed anyone yet? He's. He's raised fifteen million bucks, and he. By the way, everybody and anybody is in talks with them who mm-hmm. wants to be a talent, who wants to take their talent somewhere. They're gonna have the conversation with what Tucker is doing. By the way, I I will say one thing that I completely agree with you on related to this is that watching people sort themselves out now, when you get the people who can actually explain what their ideas are and understand history and do it honestly, and that's a very hard part of the the pundit class because everyone's got their own pressures and why they do things. And some people want to fight with pundits more, which is exactly why I just laid out my Candace thing the way it is. I'm I'm past that point in my life and career. I don't want to do that. Um, but the sorting of ideas when you can really like, you have a good sense of what Tucker believes. You have a good sense of what Ben believes. You have a good sense of what I believe and what these guys believe. Right. That is good. That is really good. So the fact that that has been, uh, has been illuminated to us a little bit more over the past few months, I think is quite good. doesn't mean that all the other pressures related to business and clicks and everything else don't exist. But I think knowing what people think a little bit more for sure. uh, is way better. For sure. And, and, yeah. and you, you know, great. That, that gets you to say no, yes, absolutely, maybe, sometime, absolutely not. You get to pick and choose and go through the people. That way that's the marketplace. Yeah. And I then, would also say related to the, unfortunately related to Israel, because it brings up a lot of old hatreds and Jews do tend to be a little more sensitive to, you know, say mm-hmm. uh, genocide than perhaps other groups, <laughs> um, that watching a lot of the pundit class just pontificate on a bunch of things that they have no idea about. And I'm not calling anyone out specifically here, but, and yeah, this you see on mainstream, they, who have no idea of the history, no idea of the British mandate of Palestine, and yeah. that a country called Palestine never existed with a people known as Palestinians who lived in it. And if you look at the Palestinian national soccer team from the 1930s, it was all Jews. And the Palestine Post, which is now the Jerusalem Post, was the Jewish newspaper. And the Arabs used to boycott Palestine because that's where the Jews lived. Like e- they have everything so backwards, unfortunately, that uh, that it gets harder and harder in a time of algorithms for people to tell the truth. I'll wrap, I'll wrap it up and uh, move to uh, the, the next story. Tom, did you want to say something? No, I was going to echo Dave. Go look up at your history. It was massive Jordanian um, immigration of people who then identified themselves as Palestinians. Well, there is apartheid in the Middle East. It's in Jordan and Lebanon. Do you know that in Lebanon, you can Google this right now, there are 30 some odd jobs that Palestinians cannot have mm. in Lebanon. There's no job as an Arab in Israel that you can't have. Jordan is run by the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan, and they have about 60 percent Palestinians who do not have equal rights as the rest of their citizens. So a lot of this is just it's just confusion. And then I think it's attached now to the fact that Jews are a little sensitive to being exterminated 75 years after the Holocaust. I'll I'll say this and we'll move on to the next story. Uh, The one thing that has happened in the last uh, uh, six months is the likes of Candace, whose show and eyeballs, it's like almost every week she's trending. Yeah. Every single week, Candace is trending. It's not easy to do, by the way. This is a woman that just had her third kid and, you know, doing the show and having the family and all this other stuff. And it's like her husband, you got to go and travel back and visit family there and you got to come back here and you got to do this and you got to do that. Her shows uh, uh, exploded. Uh, Tucker has uh, obviously been exploding, but even more because he is willing to go on the road, talk to anybody. He, it almost seems like he's uh, very accessible to anybody. Look, he'll get on a plane, go to Romania, and then he'll go to Russia, and then he'll go over here. That takes a lot of work. Most people don't want to do that. And he's got a family, and he's got, and he's got the kids, and he's got this. So you got to give him respect. So I, when I watch data and numbers, how the market reacts purely based on data, you'll see that taking place. And I think both of them... Uh, uh, the audience is saying, 
whether they agree or not, they want to hear what Candace has to say. They want to hear what Tucker has to say. And that's very hard to consistently keep. Sometimes you can be hated, but you still keep your audience. Sometimes you can be loved and you still keep your audience. There's people who are loved, but nobody wants to see them anymore. And there are people that are hated that they no longer want to listen to those guys anymore. If your loved audience still wants to watch you and your hated audience still curious to come back to you, you're winning. And I think those two guys are winning. So uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens here moving forward. Uh, I think uh, Ben uh, uh, necessary. I think Candace necessary. I think Tucker necessary. I think all these voices are necessary in a marketplace, and they keep killing it. Okay. All right. Next story to get into. Uh, uh, three billionaires came out of nowhere supporting Trump. Okay. So first of all, Home Depot founder Bernie Marcus issues battle cry to GOP, unite behind Trump. Billionaire John Paulson to hold mega donor fundraiser for Donald Trump. Okay. Nelson Peltz from the guy that's trying to get a board seat on Disney, or he has one, or something's going on. He's a very uh, powerful guy to vote for Donald Trump over fears of Joe Biden's mental condition. Back to back to back, I think all these announcements were on the same exact day. Do you think this is going to be a trend of more people, Tom, coming out publicly supporting Trump against Biden? Absolutely. I think what's happening now is the primaries are over, and the primary is a time where we can come together with a variety of candidates, such as DeSantis, put himself out there, ran a campaign. Uh, Nikki Haley ran a campaign. A lot of people ran a campaign. Doug ran a campaign, you know, the guy that we met out there, you know. And, oh, Doug with the big eyebrows. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Right. Um, and and who, you know, was up there campaigning, even though he had, uh, I guess, did an ACL or something. He really he got really hurt. But all that time of expe- inspection is done. Life is about to get effing serious. And so people are coming out. We're coming to the election. We know who the two guys are. No, Trump didn't get, get um, held back or, um, or, or, or use these legal techniques to disqualify him. He wasn't held back. He's still here. That was part of the calculus that was in the Haley camp. Absolutely. It was a little piece of the calculus that was in the DeSantis camp, to be fair, that, hey, he may not even make it there. And so now they're coming out. Bernie Marcus is out. John Paulson's out. Nelson Pels is out. And they're all out. And I think you're going to see more of this PBD as the election gets closer. It's getting real. People are looking at what really matters. They're looking at who the real candidates are. And they're voting with their wallets because it's time for them to stand up and take a stand. And guess what? They're at it. We talked about this earlier. Uh, you know what Bernie uh, Marcus, uh, John Paulson, and uh, Nelson Peltz have in common? Hmm. They're right. all Jewish. And they're all like, let's fucking go. They, you guys, <laughs> yo, let, you guys want to have an attitude? You want Chuck Schumer to go over there and talk shit about Israel? Guess what? Now the money. You talked about the vote. Dave, now, guess what? The money's going for Trump. So I don't know. I, I know Marcus from Home Depot. I don't know this Nelson Peltz guy. But this the point on the mental condition, I mean... Do, does anyone at this table believe that Joe Biden is running the country? Do you believe that not the ideas all. that come out of this administration nope. and the final calls, a man who not only fumbles everything he says and can't read a teleprompter and slurs literally every single sentence that he says, and yes, they can pump him up with some stuff and get him to be semi-functional at certain hours of the day. Do you think he's Standard actually union. the same guy who also who also often at the end of press conferences says, uh, oh, I'm not supposed to say that or I'm going <laughs> to get in trouble if yeah. I say that. Yeah. Does anyone hear honestly believe he, he I yes I believe he is the president meaning his name is on the desk yeah. but does anyone actually believe that what is happening with this country is being driven by a cogent Joe Biden Absolutely and, not. and I don't think there's no. even I don't even think you can get I would recommend go try to get five Democrats legit Democrats that will honestly put their name to that and you barely can find any. Can I give you a scary well, You can talk that. about that yeah. but I mean uh, that's not really the question. The question is what's going on with the bur- uh, and with these billionaires and regardless of who's there Dave and I agree I think there's a shadow behind him that's pulling the levers but regardless of who's there these guys don't want it and they're all unifying there. It's the you know the it's it's time. It's time to vote. It's time to get serious. Time to take a side. Well, the reason I mention it though is because I think if he wa- if he wasn't so obviously broken down, if yeah. he wasn't so obviously not Joe Biden of twenty years ago, I don't know that everyone would get there. I think people are like, oh, it's not just that the policies are freaking mm-hmm. horrible and the border is open and Bidenomics makes no sense and everything else. It's also that he gets up there and there's no confidence. You watch him 
I'm sure all of you guys have had relatives with dementia. My, my grandmother had it. And when I was doing stand up in New York, my days were a little free cause I was working at night. So I would take her to the, to the elder care doctors and the geriatric doctors. His behavior is exactly the same. And you know, that thing when they start talking and you're just waiting for them to get to the end of the sentence, mm-hmm. you're just mm-hmm. praying that they get there yeah. because you don't want to have to, Oh grandma, you know, you lost it or blah, blah, blah. It's like we're all doing that with this guy and pretending that we're not doing it. And the media is running cover. You saw that Chuck Scarborough clip where he oh. said he's sharper than ever. Yeah, it's yeah. like, Bullshit. what do they have on you, dude? Yeah. What do they and have on you? And they're chanting, four more years. Yeah. Four more. Oh, I'll give you something even uh, scarier because uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that would agree with you that basically saying there's no way he's running this country. That's crazy. He's probably got a team of handlers, uh, you know. Number one, we learned during the State of the Union address, when you set the bar so low that he can't even tie his shoes, he can't tie two sentences together. When he gets out there and basically yells at everybody for an hour and a half, it sort of lessens the argument that he's not capable of doing that. But here's what I'll give you, because we were all sitting there at lunch. I won't say the name. We were sitting there at lunch, and he said, you want to know what's even scarier? I'm, I'm one phone call away from the guy that's basically running the show within the Biden administration. Yeah. The scariest thing is that it's actually him making the decision. So you would think otherwise. There's other people making decisions. He basically made this a very credible source here. You were there. Basically said, no, 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 no. It's actually him making the decisions. That might be even scarier. That 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 actually is even scarier. But this thing where he gets to the end of these press conferences and he they, says, oh, if I say that, I'm in well, trouble. They told me no. Pat, you're, uh, your name's all over this place. You're in charge of this operation. <laughs> uh, if you were to flub something during the show, uh, do you, do you get in trouble with somebody? Do they take you out back and hit you over the head with a shovel? Or, well, or are you actually in charge of this place? I mean, you can see the big teleprompter in front of me and the big font. <laughs> I have to read that. Yeah. They don't type that up there. I don't, exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. I have to follow the We have, we have the to rules. give you names of the Irish people that yeah, you know, yeah. to remember the names. Remember to thank people. He's my English tutor yes. on yeah. this side. Yeah. Yeah. Amid, <laughs> amid these certain problems. For years I've been yeah. working on this. Yeah. And Dave, yeah. going off what you said, the, the fact that, and I'm 100% agree with you, no doubt, when he says the they and the them and I can't and they, and that's why I think they all had to go after Trump because that they Trump didn't need they Trump did Trump ever go hey guys I gotta get off the stage for two hours because they told me I gotta get off right never it's him look how many of you have had dogs that have passed away while you've had the dog right we've all most people have been through that you know at the end you can do an awful lot of stuff to keep that animal alive yeah and you can drug them with all sorts of stuff and we did that with with my dog who was 16 years old and basically they said to us the, the vet said you can give her these medications but basically it'll extend it a little bit. And then at some point it, her insides are just going to explode. Like the organs will literally, and it seems to me they are juicing him to yeah. get him out there and be functional. And they are just praying it gets to November 5th. They are just praying because other, I mean, you know, they have contingency plans, obviously, right? I mean, no. they're not running Kamala, obviously the Gavin thing, you know, for you, you may say the whole DeSantis thing was a disaster, but if DeSantis did one good thing in the entire campaign, he basically destroyed Gavin Newsom. Mm-hmm. We don't hear about Gavin anymore because that debate was so absolutely a win for DeSantis. Uh, but you know that there are plans for, he could, he could break a hip while we are doing this show right now. Mm-hmm. He, he, most people fall down the stairs. He keeps, he seems to fall upstairs. Like that could happen right now. Still Anything could happen. Not, Dave, here's where I'm going to disagree with <laughs> I know, you. Man. We're, we're one flight of stairs. Here's where I'm going to disagree Harris. with my friend Dave. Yeah. I, I, you're talking about the DeSantis Newsom debate. Yeah. From a policy standpoint, uh, it was not even a question that DeSantis won. But if you pull the general pr- people that don't know shit about policy, they're going to take a look at slick back hair uh, Newsom and think that he won. I mean, we it, haven't it, heard it, much of him since then. Oh, what do you mean? He's been doing. Uh, w- Interview after interview, he's, he's out there. I'm not going to... It's not gonna old story. That. I don't want to do that. Yeah. Newsome, Newsome, uh, but DeSantis I'll say thing. this about Biden. Yeah. Uh, you, know, the, you know, we're using the pronouns things. They, them, they, them. If they and them actually had that much control, <laughs> right. he wouldn't be running again. Meaning, unfortunately or fortunately, he's running because he made the decision as a sitting president of the United States, I'm running again. So if there was people, the coddlers, the handlers great, that were really argument. in control, if. he would have been dismissed. Well, well I yeah. think it's partly because they made a deal with the devil by bringing Kamala on, who was basically polling at zero at that Jeez. point. Yes. So they made a deal with the devil. OK, we're going to get Biden to be president and pray that it gets that far. And he and mm-hmm. Biden, you know, one of the other things is when you're when you're in cognitive decline, you don't know it necessarily. So he may not be fully aware. So I'm not saying he didn't 
didn't make the decision. I believe yeah. that he, I don't know, I assume there's a document they have to sign saying they're running again or file. Blood up. Like, I, yeah, whatever yeah. they have to do, eat a child, whatever. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying he didn't do that. I'm not saying he didn't do that. But the idea that he's the driving force behind mm -hmm. the ideas of the administration. And I think in many ways, he's a perfect avatar for what America has become. We're confused. We don't know what we are. We don't stand for anything. And, and let's go to the next story. That. Let's go to the next story. So uh, we do have a solution with all the stuff that's going on, because we can sit here and stress out about this. But if President Biden's watching this right now, mm -hmm. uh, this next testimony we have of Neuralink, what it did for oh, a patient, wild. if President Man. Biden would be willing to Get put a, the Neuralink, and Rob, if you don't mind just showing a <laughs> part of this so the audience sees the power, this thing's got 15 million views right now. Rob, go ahead and play this clip, so I'm sure you're trying to find the right place to go to. Vinny, do you know where's the right place to go to? I, Rob, I, you have it. You have it? Yeah. Right okay, go he's to controlling the chess game with his mind. He's controlling his brain. the chess game with his mind. Go the, ahead, Rob. The he is a long-term quadriplegic. Here. Do you want to explain a little bit what's going on here? Yeah, so um, I love playing chess, and so this is one of the things that y'all have enabled me to do, something that I wasn't able to really do much the last few years, especially not like this. Um, I had to use like a mouse stick and stuff, but now it's all uh, it's all being done with my brain. If y'all can wow. see the cursor yeah. moving around the screen, that's that's all me, y'all. Um, that's all that's him. Cool, huh? Wow. You know what's cool? What if he's having dirty thoughts and yeah. porn just starts coming up on his computer? It's like, yeah. no, 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 no! I don't stop thinking of porn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, God bless. I mean, but but here's the slippery slope. This is cool. God God bless him. He's a quadriplegic. He's be he could play chess with his mind. But bro, now that it's somebody can control what you're thinking and like, uh, that's a scary, scary slippery slope. That who who's in, whoever's in control of that neural link, if he's not a quadriplegic, you're just trying to enhance your life. Says, hey, go and kill such and such, and you're like, oh my god, I don't even want to do it, but you just do it. Tom, where's that? What do you what, what do you think about this? Because I, I think there's a part of you that's optimistic that this kind of technology is not available for certain group, uh, groups of people. I, I think, I think this is phenomenal. I mean, let's let's use a real like a real world example. Suppose this is a high functioning engineer who has a car accident and mm -hmm. unfortunately ends up like this. His brain, his education, his experience wants to be a productive member of society, and Elon Musk has given him an opportunity to come back and be that and support his family. And to return to a, a certain level of of productivity, if not, we don't know where this goes. Could this lead to, you know, mobility? Well, we're talking about brain, not, you know, repairing, you know, the spinal column. But I think this is fabulous that someone like Elon Musk has got the vision to make it happen. Anything good can be used for bad. You know, guns can be used to defend your home and then bad people can rob a liquor store. But I think this is phenomenal and I think it's wonderful. Dave, are you in the same sentiment oh, as Tom? Oh, absolutely. I mean, look, you know, it's so funny because we can talk about fighting over politics all the time or whether boys or girls or whether we should allow cannibals into the country. And it's like, look what humans actually can mm. do. If we could get through the BS for one moment, not only can we in essence now ch like base, I mean, this is telepathy now in real time, right? Using technology, but we could also, as Elon talks about, we could go to Mars, we could go to other galaxies like, and we will, by the way, we will get through this technological adolescence that we're in and we're going to do incredible things. This is, this is a marker. This is a moment. And I think everyone will remember or look back on this moment, seeing this going, wow, this is the thing we're about to unlock. And if we could only get through all of the BS of constantly trying to destroy everything that we know to be good. And guess what? Uh, to just add it to the stuff that we're always talking about. It's like, who cares if the engineers who built this were gay or black or trans or anything? Good else? point. You think Elon was like, can I get a black trans woman to build me this <laughs> telepathy machine? Or nope. do you think he said, can I get the best fucking engineers in the history of the yep. world yep. to break every barrier that humans could have ever known? And that's why we have to get through. That's why woke has been so dangerous because it, it mm -hmm. eliminates the ability to do things like that. Great point. I, I, I'll just shout out to Elon Musk. I, I wonder if that the haters 
will now be silenced for this great deed he's doing for people who are completely disabled, completely have major health issues. It's easy to criticize Elon Musk when he basically takes over Twitter or X and it's now this right wing platform. It's a free speech platform. You know, if you don't have a Tesla, you can't really appreciate Tesla as much. If he's doing things in rockets in the sky, going to Mars, this is actually changing people's lives for the better. I wonder if his haters will step up and congratulate yeah. him. But he could have had a black trans lesbian. No, I can't believe like, you, 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 they missed the shot. Yeah, Let's go to this next. Tom, I'm coming to you with this one here to see what's going on. So Fed holds rates steady and maintains three cuts coming sometime this year. CNBC, uh, I, I, the interest rate steady within a range of uh, 5.25 and 5.5, maintaining the highest level in the last 23 years. The central bank signaled three-quarter point cuts by the end of 2024, according to projections from Federal Open Market Committee. Fed officials uh, uh, revised the GDP growth projections upwards for 2024, anticipating a 2.1% annualized rate up from previous estimates of 1.4. In December, unemployment rate forecast saw a slight decrease to 4%, while core inflation projects rose to 2.6, a 0.2% point increase from before. Tom, what's what's going on here? Because a market exploded yesterday. Yeah, so we have to remember that the stock market loves uh, stability and they love uh, to know what the money is going to cost. And so the market's going to go up based on, uh, you know, the short-term future, which is six to nine months as far as the market's concerned. And so the market likes that. The market also likes, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, it likes layoffs because layoffs mean temporary pop and profits, usually for the companies are making uh, doing those layoffs. What it means for you, me, and everyone is that mortgage rates are probably going to be pretty stable, maybe down about three quarters of a point to a point in December from where they are right now, but they're not going to drop two points. So you can go refi things and have that, that gap you would want to do it. And there's a thing called the Fed. Whenever you hear the Fed, the Fed is a thing, but it's a thing made up of the Fed Board of Governors. And Rob, do you have that chart? And there's what's called the dot chart. And the dot chart is where we get to see how the Fed Board of Governors are going to vote about the future of money. And if you look at the far left-hand side here, 2024, see all those dots right at 4.75% is yep. where they are? Yep. Well, right now we're at, you know, five and a half, five and a quarter on the on the, the, the rates that banks borrow money from the government so that then they can, you know, loan it to you and me and to businesses. And see, the dot chart is all right there, which says that they are all of the opinion based on the condition of the economy that we don't need to drop rates crazy. So that's, they're going to drop it probably three times. And it has implications for our election. Rob, do you have the calendar? Here's the dates of when the Fed is going to get together. This is the the, the Fed website. Yeah, this is what had. I wanted to see. Thanks yep. for bringing this up, Tom. And there we go. So March 19th and 20th, we just made statements. That's all they made. April 30th, May 1st, June 11th and 12th, July 30th, 31st, September 17th. Most people like me and Jamie Dimon, and he's usually right about the Fed, believe that there's going to be a September and June quarter point cut coming with that little asterisk, which is economic data reports. And so folks are saying that they're really looking at the Fed going June, September, November, because what the Fed is saying, inflation is hanging right now about 3%. And they're saying that jobs have been brisk and GDP. Well, GDP hot and job growth a little slow right now without rampant unemployment usually are things that heats up the economy and keeps inflation. And so it looks like we're going to get two or three cuts on these dates that go right into the election. So who's taking credit for that and what that does to the polling? It's going to be big. It's going to be big. They have to. By the way, the DNC in August... So April, May, June, July. So depending on when, if they lowered it three times those three months, the DNC in August will be on fire. Yep. Just want to let you know this. The Fed saying April 30th in the first, probably not. So yeah. everybody says June looks to be a lock right now. In other words, these guys take February, April, and August off. That's what they do, because those are the only times they don't talk. They And October. i got to add October to it as well. So interesting when they come back and do this. But we'll see what's going to happen with the marketplace uh, right now. There's a lot going on. But this was a great podcast. To those of you that said you wanted Tom to have his own show, he does. And guess what? 3,700 of you voted. And Tom's channel, if you can refresh it, uh, Rob, 
It went from 29,400 subs oh, wow. to 33,000. Nice. But we need another 1,400 to reach the 5,000 goal. So click on the link below. Go subscribe to Tom's channel, BizDoc, okay? He's got content coming out on a weekly basis. Would love to see this channel get to 100,000 subs. Aside from that, we may be done here with Dave Rubin, but there's SauceCast with Adam and Dave later on this afternoon. So make sure you tune into SauceCast. And meanwhile, if you love to laugh, you can always find Vinny uh, under, by the way, Unusual Suspect at his biggest live yesterday. 1,200 plus people watch Unusual 12 Suspect live, yesterday. 12,000 un Unusuals. And I'm, and I'm performing, Pat, April 11th at the Miami Improv. Sick. You guys, we're going. Of course. You're of course. going if you're going to yeah. be in the I area. will be there. Please. Dave's going to be there. Pat's right, going to be there. Gang, have a good one. Uh, we may or may not do a pod tomorrow. We'll let you know if we, if we do. It'll be a surprise. But most likely, we'll do it next week. Dave, thanks for coming out again. Appreciate Thank you. you guys have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You know what?